Hello viewers, welcome to a special sports presentation. This is the 21st Silver Bowl at Laney College. I'm Mario Bobino, and today I'm going to be joined by Mike Taylor of the Oakland Raiders Public Relations Department. How you doing, Mike? Thank you. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure. Now, me and Mike are going to share the color commentary duties today for the 21st Silver Bowl. Now, Mike, do you have any assessments on these teams thus far? Well, these teams obviously know one another, them having played in the OOL, and I played this year, and playing in last year's Silver Bowl. So it's a, a, a rematch, I should say, between these two OAL Titans. No, Tigers. There you go. No, Titans. Titans and Tigers. Well, give him a minute. He'll get it together. Let's talk about some of the players. Fremont has a record of 7-4. and four. Skyline has a record of 10-1. and one. Do you know anything about any of the players that our viewers could look forward to seeing during today's telecast? Well, I'm looking forward to, to seeing these Vital brothers. I hear about them having a long legacy. Vital? As far, vital. I vital. got you. Okay. Yeah, it's hey, they corrected me earlier on I that. I got you. Okay. Uh, it's having a long legacy as far as this family is concerned, and I know they have a couple of guys on Fremont's team, so I'm looking forward to seeing them play. Well, not only that, Fremont has a few players. They have a, a good defensive back and running back in number 20. Uh, they also have number, uh, a W.C. Brewer. And they also have the big lineman. I can't think of his name, but as I'm talking of him right now, I'm going to show it, and I'm going to show the graphic of his name so the viewers know who I'm talking about. Uh, they have, uh, Stevenson is another uh, person that the Fremont Tigers have on their squad. They have a really talented squad. I mean, they're not really big in numbers, but they're big in size. And I had a chance to talk with Coach Walker earlier about his team, and he was telling me, like, last year they, you know, they really weren't as ready as they were this year. This year they jumped out to a lead on Skyline, but what ended up happening was the guys didn't, they were really excited about the lead, so they kind of let them slip away. But they're really focused now. That's what Coach Walker was telling me. Well, I don't think it'll be a question now. This is a championship game. I'm sure both teams will be in the top of the game. As far as uh, Skyline's concerned, I'm looking forward to seeing their quarterback, Jamal Ogani. Hear him play. See him play. I've heard yeah. a lot about him. Yeah, he's a real good kid. He's, he, he came out, uh, he played Pop Warner for the San Leandro Crusaders for like five years. He started playing quarterback in his third season with the Crusaders. So he's been playing for a while now, and he's a real talented kid. He's not the only kid. He got some talented receivers in Rufus Barker. Uh, also, he has a receiver in uh, Lewis Williams as well as Harrison Smith. And um, these guys are really talented. Also, what you viewers need to look out for here, I'm going to look over to my left here and get his name right. But he is probably the most fundamentally sound football player I have seen play thus far. And I'm speaking of number uh, 25 for the Skyline Titans and uh, Kurt Johnson. He came from New York, but he is really fundamentally sound. So you viewers, watch out for this fundamentally sound football player. 
and Kurt Williams. Any Once again, these teams very know one another very, very well, haven't played last year, haven't played this year already in a real tight game. I'm looking forward to a very, 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 very well played contest here today. And in addition, they also have their All-American player in Jairus Boas. Boas, uh, he's number 11. He also plays basketball for the Titans as well. So look out for him because he's going to be doing major things as well. And let me look. Let me glance to my left so I can talk about the Fremont players I didn't get a chance to talk about real quick in reference to you viewers. Look out for I'm speaking of um, Larry Lattimore, number 20. Look out for him. He's a very talented player. As well as, I have to cheat here a little bit, uh, um, Paul Alberta. Paul Alberta is also a very talented player. Uh, he plays like linebacker, fullback. He's very talented, and then they have a massive line in Jawan, Dejan Bush and Stephen Bell. These guys are very talented, so we have to look out for them as well. As, I'm sorry, as we talked about earlier, I mean, the key to Fremont, I think, is really sustaining their in intensity, really sustaining. They have a very, very small roster as far as players are concerned. Skylight is going to come out and run a lot of guys at them. But the key for Fremont is to stay in it, stay in it physically, and stay in it mentally. Well, they'll definitely be ready physically, and it looks like they're about to kick off here, so our intro couldn't have been any better, Mike. So we're going to let our camera pan over to the uh, football field. Then we're going to continue to run our mouse. Now, in addition, Mike, in addition, Mike, let's talk about, uh, like I said, you know, the, the past experience with these teams. This is Coach Walker's third year with the Fremont Tigers. So he's really looking to put a damper in Coach Beam's record. Beam has had an outstanding record in the Silver Bowl. He's won 13 of the last uh, 21 Silver Bowls that have been played. This is the 21st Silver Bowl. So he kind of has his name written all over the Silver Bowl. Well, he has his name written all over the Silver Bowl, most certainly. And we're going to see what happens with Matthew Walker and see if he can't really uh, maybe erase a little bit of that today in today's contest yes because he's very very focused and he's very determined in this team right now now we have back to receive the uh, kickoff for skyline titans this john has my my, my roster here the viewers don't go nowhere and the kickoff is underway on the 21st silver bowl receiving the kick for the titans is the starting shortstop for the titans he also plays shortstop for the titans They didn't give me his name here. That's pretty unfortunate. We got our roster just a second ago. But the person who received the kickoff for the Titans is also the start. D Daniel? Daniel Limbert. There you go. go. He's an outstanding baseball player. Matter of fact, his father is the coach. His father's the head coach of the baseball team, and he has a brother that is a starting free safety for Fresno State. So I guess as far as baseball, I guess he's going to be starting any place he wants to on the baseball team, huh, with no, his father being no, there. He's very, no, he's a very talented individual. If you go out there and see him, Mike, you'll take that back. Under center is Algani. Gives the ball to Chris James as he goes for the sweep. Picks up a good good amount of yards there. Eight yards on the carry. That was a, that was a very good run by Mr. James here. He had uh, off there, off left tackle on the flank there. He had some good blocking by his left tackle and was able to get outside for eight yards. And you know about you know about Chris James too, right? Tell me about it. You know, you know, well, he basically led the Titans in rushing. She had about something like 843 yards. And um, he's really kicked up a whole bunch of dust for the Titans this year in reference to the ground game. Just on that first play, I can see the guy has vision and has some quickness. Yeah, there was an uh, article in today's paper that talked about it. They give it to James again. It seems like he's going to be their workhorse for the day. Well, two plays, two carries. I think uh, I think you can be safe to say that. Yeah. He's a very talented kid, but see, we can't sleep on their receivers. They have three receivers that are very talented. Rufus Barker, number seven, he also plays wide receiver. Well, he's a star receiver, so to speak, but uh, he also plays baseball as well. But he's also teamed with some very talented receivers because also lining up opposite of him is Lewis Williams, who also plays basketball for the Skyline Titans. So you got a lot of versatility on, the, on this team here, huh? Guys a lot of guys play athletes. Yeah, that's correct. Well, you know, that's how, that's how, that's how it is these days, Mike. That's how it is. Underneath center is Algani, a very talented quarterback. And we have our offsides. It looks like uh, it was an entrapment on the uh, Tigers there. I don't know. You may have had an illegal procedure on uh, on uh, Fremont's wide receiver also. You mean Skyline's wide receiver, oh, I'm right? sorry. It's okay. You're right. I saw um, Johnny Brown seem to, to go offsides there, but let's see what the call is. It's against the Tigers. It's against the Tigers. And Algani had seemed to draw off Johnny Brown. Draw them offsides there. There we go. We got a first and five here, so. First and five. 11 17 remaining in the first quarter of the uh, 21st Silver Bowl at Laney College. Under center is Algani. 
He's dropping back for his first pass of the game. He gets it to Lewis. Lewis makes a good catch. There's a good straight arm. He picks up a very good chunk of yards there, huh, Mike? I was very impressed by the throw, and, and uh, more importantly, I was impressed by the run, the run after the catch. He caught it for 10 yards, and he uh, ran for 10 yards. And that's Lewis Williams, the basketball star from Skyline High, two-port star. Two-sport star. He showed his versatility on that play. Definitely. And it seems like the sky, Skyline seems to come out and doing things the way they want to do them. They seem to be controlling the offense pretty well or the offensive line, the momentum. But I just think right now, Fremont is a little, not nervous, but you know, they, it's going to take them a minute to really find out where they're at and what they're playing for once again. Well, that first drive, I mean, you never can really take a whole lot out of the first drive other than it being just that, as, as it's uh, been the case with the Raiders games this year. At 11 games, we were behind by we were behind and what nine of them. So, and we came back to win. Obviously, we're nine and two. So, um, you got to get the jitters out. You're right. You got to get the jitters. You got to get comfortable. You got to get uh, be aware of what you're looking at and then make adjustments and take it from there. That's correct. And that's Mike Taylor, the public relations director for the Oakland Raiders, who made that comment. We're at 10:57 remaining in the first quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl. The skyline times seem to be on Fremont's 48 yard line. Yeah, we got a timeout here. It's interesting how they all gather around their coach. They get. Uh, personal instruction there during the timeout. Well, I talked to Bean. He likes to address the whole team rather than just one player. He believes in I want to address everybody, not just one person. How Gowney under center. Gives it to James, their workhorse. Picks up around two yards. Brought down by big Johnny Brown of Fremont. 21st Silver Bowl played at Laney College. Skyline coming in with the 10-1 record, Why the Tigers are coming in with the 7-4 record. I'll tell you what, Mario, this is a great setting, great fall day. we got the leaves falling behind us, uh, turned, uh, turned yellow on us. This is a great day for football. Well, happy belated turkey day to everybody. Likewise. Algani under center. He throws a quick screen past the Rufus. Picks up around five, picks up some good yardage after the catch. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm very impressed by this first drive. You know, I talked about the first drive not being, <laughs> you can't really make too much of it. But I am impressed by this first drive. Skyline seems to be driving down here, mixing up the plays with the pass and the run, and uh, they're moving the ball. Yeah. Right now, they're on the 42-yard uh, line. Well, I, I'm sorry, the 40-yard line. Well, I will say, you know, Beam is very excellent at getting his team motivated. I mean, it seems like he knows. I mean, Fremont definitely is on a mission to win. But he, Coach Beam knows what it takes to say the right words to get his team motivated. They've been winning for so long. You know what I mean? I do. And it's kind of hard to, to keep, you know, what De La Salle has the same problem as well. But how do you motivate your players? And he knows how to do so. Algani under center once again gives it to Terry James. Now, this kid right here, I didn't get a, ch I didn't get a chance to mention him uh, prior to the, uh, to the game, but this kid here is a monster. This kid here also plays uh, left field or center field for the Skyline Titans, and he, like, led them in home runs last year. Yeah, he's a pretty, pretty big size kid, too. Not only that, Terry Johnson, you're going to be in for a treat today, Mike, and all you viewers. Watch how he runs once the game gets started. He's only getting started, but just watch as, as the game progresses. Watch how he becomes much stronger runner. I'll tell you what, Fremont. Or... 28, Terry James is who I was just talking to. He just left the game, but he'll be back in in a minute. Fremont's he got plays to dig in here. Way. Yep, Chris James again. And they did dig in. A loss of two yards here on that play. Yeah, well, Fremont, you know, they have a lot of good athletes. They have some very talented athletes. They have some very talented athletes, so, I mean, we're in for a shootout. We're definitely in for a shootout today. I mean, in other words, Skyline may be driving right now, but prior to last year's uh, Silver Bowl game, in, in addition to this year's game when uh, Skyline won, you really never know who's going to win. It seems like one team will jump out on one team, but believe you me, Mike, the other team will storm back somehow, somewhere. Algani under center once again, gives it to Terry James, tries to get to the outside, and he does. And he is driving out of bounds. By, is that Brewer? No, by number two of the Fremont Tigers. That's Harrison Smith. Harrison Smith. Harrison Smith. I take that back. How could I get my, a vital? How can you do that? I, I, viewers, please, I know the kid really well, Gennardo. Well, I know I him really the, well. I made the, this is my first time. <laughs> I made the mistake. Here. Okay, you kind of threw me off. I'll I know him, blame. and I talked to him earlier today, and he told me he's feeling real good. He's looking forward blame. to the game. Young kids out there playing free safety. He really came up on that play to make I the tackle. I forget Vital. So sorry, man. And his brother is a lawyer, but we haven't talked about Fremont's offense yet. Algani back to pass, throws it, and it's almost picked off. Woo, good play, good play. 
it was 45. I talked about him earlier for the Fremont Tigers. We're talking about Paul Alberta. Paul, I'm sorry, Paul Alberta made a great play. He broke right on that ball, and actually he should have picked the ball up. Yeah, he just, maybe he had a little jitter, jitters in him. He, maybe he has a little jitters, but uh, he made a big interception uh, in a playoff game last week. No, it was the, the season when they played against Tech this, this past season. No, this season. I'll tell you what, if he could have held on to that ball, there was clear sailing. It was clear sailing for well, 60 I, yards. I think he'll get another chance. Algani under center. They seem to, they're on the 30-yard line. It's 9:04 remaining in the first quarter. Algani's on rolling out to his right. Looks for a receiver. He has him. Good catch by the receiver, Lewis Williams of the Titans. Lewis Williams shows some excellent hands. The, the thing I see about these skill players from Skyline is they have excellent skills. Just that. These guys are catching the ball with their hands, not against their chest. They're catching with their hands, and they're running after the catch. Well, so you know, I'm impressed by this first drive so far. And you know what? For you viewers watching the game, or you student athletes that's watching the game, or you Titan, Tigers that's going to watch this game later on, that just came from somebody who works with Oakland Raiders, so he knows what he's talking about. So that was an excellent comment coming from you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Algani under center. Fakes. He gives it to Kurt Johnson. Fundamentally sound. Please watch this kid. This kid is very fundamentally sound as a football player. I'll tell you what, on that particular play, which was a misdirection play, the kid never went down. He kept his knees driving, kept his legs driving, and uh, drove for extra yardage there. So I was impressed by that run. Yeah, that goes by what I've been saying all along. Fundamentally sound. If you're fundamentally sound, you're going to have them type of shoes. You're going to keep your legs driving and pumping, things you're, of that nature. You're absolutely right. You're not going to be so easy to be brought down. Algani goes under center with 8.09 remaining in the first quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl. Mario Bobino being joined by Mike Taylor of the Oakland Raiders. And it was a flag, Mike. Did you see what happened? Yeah, we had a penalty. I believe we had an illegal motion on that play by the, uh, I, don't, I don't like to point out linemen, mm -hmm. so I won't do it. Let's just say it was a legal motion on Skyline. Okay. I'm sorry, illegal uh, procedure on Skyline. What a lineman move. It was, as long as it wasn't the center, Ernie Houston. He's a very good kid in the community. He works at Lucky's over there by where I reside, and uh, he's a very good, good student athlete. Was not him. As long as it wasn't Ernie Houston, the center for the Titans. Algani under center, the ball's on the 21-yard line, second down and 13 to go. Uh, quick screen pass out of the backfield to the scat back, Jonas Davis. Jonas Davis. I'll tell you what, uh, this drive, once again, I'm very impressed by this drive, and what I'm impressed about is the fact that they're running all kinds of plays. Uh, well, outs, ins, runs, up the middle, cross butt, misdirection. They're throwing it all on this first drive. Well, Coach Beam is going to use his arsenal. He knows to beat this Fremont team, he's going to have to do just more than just be one-dimensional. I mean, that's just running. He's going to have to throw, do some trickery, and that, that, that's what a good coach does. Well, I'll tell you what, based on this first drive, I wonder what he has left. <laughs> well, he has a lot. The game's only started. We're 7-12 in the first quarter. They're on the 8-17-yard line. Algani back to pass once again, looking for a receiver. Throws it, and it's picked off. Picked off by the Tiger. Picked off by Anthony Hirsch. Anthony Hirsch made a great play. He jumped right on that route. It was an in route on that. He jumped right on it, made the pick, made a crucial play. For him. And he did it because Skyline was on the 17 yard line and they were about hey, to Jerry, score. Jerry. Can it get any better than that, Mike? It can't get any better than that. That is a drive killer, no doubt. And Hurt. Anthony, Anthony Hirsch. Anthony Hirsch is only a junior. He's only a junior. He's 6 a, He's 6'1", 185 pounds. Once, once again, uh, he showed great quickness, great acceleration, great closing ability to pick off the pass and to thwart the skyline scoring opportunity. And here goes Fremont's first opportunity at offense, led by star quarterback Gennardo Vital. Now, usually, this is a flip-flop, Mike. Usually, Elario Vital gets the handoff, breaks a couple of tackles. He's feeling good. I talked to him earlier today. Usually, Mike, it's opposite. Elario usually plays quarterback, and Gennardo plays running back, but they flopped. Well, I'll tell you what, first, uh, based on that first 15-yard gain by Elario, I think that worked out for Oh, yeah. So that's interesting because all season long, it's been a reversal. Elario's been playing a quarterback, and now Gennardo's playing quarterback, but the vitals are just so talented. Hey, they can play any position on the field. I'm looking forward to seeing these guys. Oh, yeah, and their brothers are very talented as well, Mario as well as Gino. They play here at Laney College. Gennardo in the quarterback again. At the quarterback position, he gives it to Lattimore, makes a couple of moves, doesn't get much yardage as he's brought down quickly by the Titans. They swarmed on him. That was a, that was a very serious swarm the Titans made 
closed him out and made the tackle. Yeah, it seems like the tackle was made by, uh, I want to say Frank Summers, but you no, know, Charles Brown. Charles Brown made the tackle. John King was in on that also. Okay. So the Tigers are now on the 23-yard line, their 23-yard line. It's second down and 11 yards to go. It's 6.04 remaining in the first quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl. 21 years. 21 years. And you know what, Mike? Guess who played in the first Silver Bowl ever and won? John Fremont? No, you're looking to your left. Just look to your left. Look to your left. <laughs> if Robert you go, Lamone? If you go look at the Silver Bowl, the first team ever to win was Oklahoma in 1980. Yours truly was a part of that win. Well, I'll say. So I know what these young men right now are fighting for, because I once been there before. I didn't know I was in the midst of greatness. Yes, you were. And I had a chance to drink out of the Silver Bowl myself. We was the first team to drink out of it. That's well, right. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you very but much. But Lady Lee. Thank you very much. I just wanted you to know that, so now you know. <laughs> Matter of fact, guess who played on that team with me? Lorenzo Lynch. Mm. He was on the team with me. Went on to uh, do much bit, glory in the oh National yeah. Football League. Made Including great year. A couple of years with the Raiders. Exactly. 11 years in the NFL. Donato, fake handoff. He gives a handoff up the gut. Doesn't get much. I don't quite see who had the ball, but it was a Sorman defense on. Oh, he kept it himself. They got to him real quick. I'll tell you, once again, John King was in on that penetration yeah. in the backfield, yeah. was in on that tackle, yeah. which brings up fourth down, fourth and 15. Fourth and 15 on their 22-yard line. Fremont Tigers, 22-yard line with 528 remaining in the first quarter. This is the 21st Silver Bowl. It's being played here at Laney College. And it's, it's been such a great tradition the past three years to come out here after Turkey Day and, and the weather's really nice and to get a good football game. Great punt. The snap back gets it, he fumbles the ball. Recovered it. Whoa, that was a very big play. Luckily, Giannis Davis got that, that punt back. Very luckily he got it back. It bounced forward, it yeah. bounced forward on him yeah. when he muffed that punt exactly. and uh, we had a Fremont defender right there to get the ball, but fortunately, Skyline's got it. First down for Skyline at midfield. And they're on the four, they're going to start on their 49-yard line, and we're going to see what they're going to have for us this time. Now, Skyline seemed to move the ball very easily the first time they had the ball, but Fremont has big players. Not big players, but big play players. Well, you're right, and those big play players made big plays on that to thwart that last drive. We'll see what happens with Skyline for this drive. We'll see what happens as far as Fremont making any possible adjustments okay. here on defense. Exactly. Algunny under center, fakes the handout, drops back for the pass. He wants to throw long for Rufus, and he is covered well. No flag. They were looking for a flag, but nothing. Rufus ran the post corner route. He was covered very well. But yeah. that was, I'll tell you, that was a good pass. Uh, unfortunately for Rufus, his feet got tangled up with the Fremont defender and the uh, incomplete. And guess who was back there at the free safety position? Mr. Vital. Yeah, Mr. Vital. The quarterback. He, hey, he plays quarterback and free safety. Let's say these, these two gentlemen are going to be very, very vital to Fremont's opportunities. That's correct. That's correct. That's definitely correct. They will have an outcome of this game. The ball is pitched out to Chris James on the sweep. Doesn't get much. Brought down immediately by the big defensive lineman for the Tigers. Johnny Brown, the 12th grader, the offensive defensive line, 6 feet, 280 pounds. I'll tell you, Arenas Thomas was in on that tackle also. Oh, yeah. 280 pounds, viewers. 280, 6 feet. He's being looked at at a lot of colleges to advance to the next level. Algani under center. Drops back, gets it to Chris James. Chris James is tackled, brought down by Chris James again. Not by Chris James, I take that back, by Johnny Brown. I'll tell you, Johnny Brown shows some quickness, lateral movement to bring down a running back for a guy so large, you know a guy so massive in his size. He reminds me of Grady Jackson and D-Rock. great deal, I, I agree with you 100%. You see how that. he moved him like that? And move down the field and make the tackle. Exactly. Move across the line of scrimmage, I should say, to make the tackle. That was very impressive. And for you young guys watching, just because the person gets behind you, don't give up because he he tackled him from behind. He stuck with it. He took the proper pursuit angle and was able to tackle the ball carry. Correct. Back to punt for the Titans. He gets the punt off. There's number six for the Titans. Fabian Placicia does a decent job of getting the ball down to the Tigers' 20-yard line. I'll tell you, it was good that the, the Tigers' uh, return guy got out of the way. It was a very, very difficult punt to, punt to handle. Got out of the way. Now it's first and 10 on the 20 for Fremont High School. And you know what's interesting is, is Placencia, he's also the kicker for the, uh, I mean, you know, the PAT. 
uh, for, the ti for the Titans. And he's also a very good kicker. If Skyline gets anywhere within the 30, they're going to go for a field goal. That's it. I'd like to see that happen. Oh, you, no, don't see, you don't see a whole lot of field goal kickers with any type of efficiency in high school. Yeah. And when you do, it's you the, know about yeah, it. Yeah, it makes it more interesting, too. No doubt. Well, they have a field goal kicker, but they, they, re they didn't have to go for a field goal in that last drive because they were driving. They just had to throw an interception. That's true. And that was Algani's sixth pick of the year, unfortunately. Fremont now will take over, and they seem to run a quick trap play up the gut. They don't seem to get much, though. Well, got two yards, and let's say it was a tackle by committee for Skyline. Okay, okay. I can go for that. And the ball was taken by Brewer. Now, watch out for this kid. He missed the first contest when Fremont played against uh, 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 Skyline earlier this, this year, but he's back now, and he's an extra added dimension that the Tigers do definitely need. Well, with the Vital Brothers and Brewer, and I'm looking forward to seeing some real skilled performances for Fremont High School. And, and Fremont does have a lot of skilled players, like I mentioned earlier. They have, all have Alberto, and they also have Larry Lattimore. Guys who's been in the paper all year long. Gennaro under center once again. Ball is given to his brother up the gut. Not much once again. Not much at all. Once again, the skyline front line thwarted that effort. And they're on the 22-yard line with 2.49 remaining in the first quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl played at Laney College. Jairus Bars wolf is on that tackle. He's their big-time player. What I mean by big-time, a lot of colleges and schools are looking at this kid. He will definitely move on to the next level more than likely a Pac-10 school, but a lot of these kids don't make their decisions until sometime in January. They want to take, which I commend them on, take all your trips, man. Why not? Take all your trips. Take, take your opportunity. Your trip, yeah. Take advantage of what's what's laid out for you, exactly. absolutely. And then kick back and, and, and weigh your options and take the best one that's going to do for you. I agree with that. Vital underneath center once again, gives it to, fakes it to his brother, rolls right, throws a quick pass to... Paul Alberta, who makes an excellent catch. Once again, on Fremont's side, Paul Alberta showed some uh, some skills there in terms of catching the ball with his hands and turning up field for a first down. Well, you know, he is athletic. He, he won Prep of the Week honors this past this past season, so he's somebody that the, that the Titans have to watch out for. And speaking of the week, mm -hmm. you know, John Beam was one of our, the Oakland Raiders, coaches of the week. Okay. Well, that's excellent to know. Did uh, Mr. Walker ever get that opportunity? Uh, unfortunately not, so uh, he'll, 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 well, he'll have to keep trying. Well, 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 what about after this game here, huh? If they come up with a W, huh? We, we can guarantee that, huh? We can look into that one. Okay, well, let's make sure we do investigate. The ball is given up the gut to his brother, Ilario Vital. Picks up around good four yards. Good four-yard play, and that was a good play on first down. They got uh, four yards on the play. Now they're working with a relatively short field on second and six. Second and six on the 31-yard line. Mario, which is what you want. You want to stay away from a long, long, long down and distances there, especially on second down. You want to have something manageable. Okay. You don't want to have second and 10, okay. second and 12. Correct. You want to have second and five, second and six. Now you don't know what they're going to do. Pass, so, run. They have the equal option of passing and running on this play. Oh, that's a good tidbit, Mike. Good tidbit there. Vital underneath center once again. Drops back, gives it to his brother. Oh, stuck quickly. Bye. Number one for the Titans, who came in real, Jarrell Hardy. Well, as I was saying, those uh, down and distances, now we're back. He lost five <laughs> yards, so now we're back third and ten. And the only thing you can do on this play is pass the ball. Hey, but let's, let's give credit to the Titan there, Jarrell Hardy. He came up really quick from the safety position. Jarrell Hardy came up very fast and with on the support and made the tackle deep in the backfield. Yeah, he's playing uh, in today. You Sometimes he plays safety, but they got him playing defensive end today. And he shot into the gap and made the tackle. For a loss, like you said, third and 11, so we know what's coming up now. It's got to be a pass. And uh, the Fremont Tigers are on their 29-yard line. Vital underneath center, drops back for the pass. Wants to go deep, going for Lattimore. Alberto, Alberto, come on. Alberto had to adjust on the play. The ball was high and short. He adjusted, and the ball was in his hands. Unfortunately, he couldn't come down with it. Well, that's going to be big. That's going to be big. But you know what, I talked to him earlier, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, that play is not going to be a factor later on in the game. He will make up for that. Well, I'm sure the kid will get a lot more opportunities. So the key to him is keep his head up and keep playing. He'll get a lot more opportunities. And on that play now, now it brings a fourth down and 11 on the Tigers' 29-yard line with 25 seconds remaining in the first quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl, and they're going to punt. Back to Mr. Vital. Who's Back going to doing punt. his thing, and his thing is whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever, right? Gennato. Gennato is back to punt. He gets a good punt off. Look at that athlete. Look at that punt. That's about and a 45 yard Reese. punt. Harrison Smith four. receives the punt. Brought down immediately by a host of Tigers, and in particular, brought down by Howard. I was impressed by that punt. About a four second hang time, about a 45, 50 yard punt, and minimal return. 
And he, like I said, once again, he's brought down by Howard Fafita, who is a 12th grader, 6 feet, 215 town, 215 pounds offensive lineman and linebacker. Great open field tackle. That was a lineman who made that tackle. Most linemen don't do that. I'll tell you what, he got down that field. He hustled, got himself down the field in position to make the tackle, closed in, broke down, yeah, I was and made say, a quality tackle. I was, he broke. He really did break down, though, Mike. I was kind of impressed with that. Algani underneath center. Gives the ball to gut to Chris James. Doesn't get much. Number 11, Rollins Thomas made that tackle. Excellent tackle. It now seems to be a timeout called by the Titans. Oh, I take that back. It's the end of the first quarter, viewers. End of the first quarter. Score is nothing to nothing. I'll tell you, both teams are taking no quarter here. I'll tell you, this is a real, real tight contest, and I don't see it changing anytime soon. Both of these teams seem to me to be well matched and really seem to know one another very, very well. That's so correct. And you know, right now, the first quarter's over with Mike. You play football just as well as myself. Usually when you play in a game, a big game, the first quarter's a little eerie because you got still jitters and you're a little nervous. Absolutely. It's a feeling out process. Exactly. And, and these guys, it's just like a prize fight. You know, these guys want to jab, feel one another out. Mm -hmm. Now we'll see what happens. Hopefully there'll be some fireworks here in the second half, or the second quarter, and yeah. on through the second half. No, the fireworks are definitely going to start. I'm Mario Bobino being joined today by Mike Taylor of the Oakland Raiders, Public Relations Department. Mike, it's a pleasure having you come out here and join us today. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. You, know, you had talked about earlier about the recruiting process, Mario. I know you've been involved in it. And yes. Unfortunately, I had the opportunity to be involved in it as well. That's correct. And I agree with you. It's a situation where these, these kids should take all the opportunities that, uh, that avail themselves uh, to them and uh, then make the proper decision. Sure, take all your recruiting trips. And, uh, and then and look into everything, look into all the options, and then take it from there. That's so true. And something else, Mike, that these kids seem to forget about, it's so important to hit your books as well. Because you just because you're being recruited, but if you don't pass that SAT, then they recruit Well, you. hitting your books is, is what it's all, this is yes. what it's all about here. It's all about getting an opportunity to go to college for free. You know, it's not about say? getting to the pros. It's about getting the opportunity to go to college for free. There you go. And we're back now. A flag goes up, but uh, the whistle's blown by a referee. Flag comes out. Skyline Times are on their 38-yard 38 38 line. Second down to six yards to go. This is the 21st Silver Bowl being played at Laney College. We're back on that, that recruiting issue. As, as we said, you know, we've both been through it, so we, we know what goes on. But uh, as I said, it's an opportunity for kids to not only get their schooling for free, but to, uh, to really see a lot. See a lot, have the opportunity, and take advantage of those opportunities. That's so true. But That's the key is, is the educational opportunity. Oh, the, the football is not even part of it. Right. Enjoy it, but the key is education. Education. Hope you hear that, kids. Algani underneath center. Second and 11 on the 34-yard line. The ball is given to Terry James, the power back. Terry, Terry James made an impressive run. We have a penalty flag on that play. Holding. It's holding on Skyline. The Titans. We have a holding call on the Titans. But he's a power back. He's going to get loose. Sooner or later, he's going to get loose. Well, I'm impressed by his burst, by his yeah. quickness and his burst into the line of scrimmage. Right. As the referee walks off the penalty, which will make it third down and 11 yards to go on Skyline's 34-yard line with 11.51 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl being played at Laney College. I'll tell you, second and 20. We'll see what John Beam comes up with in his bag of tricks now in the second and 20. What do you do for second and 20? Well, I just know one thing. Throw, or you may throw, throw a draw to throw him off, but it seems like it's going to be a pass. But I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if he threw a draw in there. Back to pass, bootleg, reverse. Lewis Williams drops it. Fremont recovers it. Vital. Did you see that play by Vital? Larry Vital made an excellent play. Not only, did he, not only was he there in terms of the uh, protecting against the reverse, but he made the fumble recovery. Now, Great. First and 10 for Fremont in excellent field position. I mean, let's see. Look. Fremont, excuse me. Skyline tried a trick play. Great call, reverse. But guess who stayed home? Mr. Vital. Mr. Vital. And look what reward that brought him. Now look what we got. Now we have the Fremont Tigers on the skyline, 24-yard line with the first down. Excuse me, they're on the 16-yard line with the first down, Mike. With Obviously. The, Excellent scoring opportunity. Here. With 11.45 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl as Gennato goes underneath center. Gennato Vidal gives it to Will C. Brew, W.C. Brewer, as he picks up around four yards up the gut. A good play. Right up the gut, four yards. In a position here, and if nothing else, they're in an excellent position as far as the field goal is concerned. Exactly. I don't know. I don't know what uh, Fremont has as far as their field goal is concerned. So, but uh, B's in an excellent position right now. They're right in the center of the field. 
but we won't deal with that right now because it's second down. So they still have a couple of opportunities to get in the end zone and even get a first down. Well, Mike, just to let you know, Fremont does have a kicker. He does, they do have a field goal kicker. I think he's from the soccer team, and they do have one. Second down, seven yards to go on the 20-yard line of the Titans. Gennardo draws the Titans offside. That he does. Excellent play. Change of cadence. A little hoop <laughs> hoop. Yes. A little he, head bob. Yes. And, and he drew them offside. And he got the penalty, so they have an advancement now. Very, very effective play. Five yards going to be marked off. Now it's going to be second and one. Now, Mike, we're just, sitting, and we're just sitting up here in the booth, so we can really never say what's on the coach's mind. So the only thing we could do is assume here, you know, do some type of assumption here. What do you think Fremont's going to come up with now with second and two on the 20? I, I think Fremont's going to jam it right up the middle. They've been doing that basically for the most part of the day here as far as it runs, and I don't see them changing anything right now. You know, and I agree Ram with it you. right up the middle. And I agree with you, but I would go with the pass because I think they're going to be expecting the run with second and two by right the underneath center, and he gives it, they go with Mike Taylor's play, gives it to his brother, Goes around left side, picks up the first down. And the Tigers seem to be inside the Skyline Titans 10-yard uh, line, huh? So yeah, I think that, that play was uh, supposed to go up the middle, but Vidal broke it out, didn't see anything, broke it outside, saw an opening, and as you said, got the first down. First and goal on the two-yard line. First, ooh, I, it looks pretty good for him right now. Well, you never know. <laughs> you, you, you never know. It's a timeout on Skyline right now. They all huddle around their coaches. Now this is interesting here right here. Matthew Walker runs out to his team as well as the defensive coordinator for, for, the, for the Skyline Titans. Now Matthew Walker, I know what he's telling his team right now because I talked to him earlier today. He's telling them right now, stay very focused. This is what we worked all season for. Let's capitalize on this opportunity that we now have in front of us. Well they do have an opportunity to take a lead right now, right here, based on the turnover. Uh, but Mr. Yeah, Vital, exactly. Lario Vital got got them the ball back. Here they are, first and let me let me ask you this: first and and goal on the two yard line. Yes. Who should we call on here? Should well, we expect Mr. Vital? It's number gonna be two? it's gonna be one. Well, you know what though? I take that back. You have so many weapons in the back here of, uh, of of the Tigers. You have the Vital brothers. You have who hasn't really got the Larry Lattimore. You know, you have Brewer. So they have a variety to go from here. Well, I'm gonna pick Mr. Vital up the middle. Okay. Okay, I mean, that's a good call. But Brewer, I mean, they have all three people I just talked about, Lattimore, Brewer, as well as Vital. Well, you, you have the option, Jim, a full house backfield here. And they're in the option, wishbone, and the ball is given to Lattimore. It, Lattimore for one yard. He didn't get in for one in. yard. That was a little surprise play there. And uh, for one yard, he got one yard, second and one. And you know what's interesting is I noticed about the Tigers, we need a chance to talk about this earlier. Did you notice, Mike, that they run a wishbone? I did notice that. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly did. Now, Full house backfield in the wishbone. And you know what they reminded me of when I see these guys play that wishbone? You remember back in our days, Oklahoma? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> J.C. Watts and all absolutely. the boys. Jamel Billy Holloway, yeah, Billy Sims, yeah, J.C. Watts. Yeah. We can go on and on. I mean, that, I mean, when you see these guys really get into it, that's what they're going to remind you of. And the ball was given to, I didn't see who was given to, Mike. Do you know who was given to? It was given to Lattimore again, and they scored. The touchdown. So the first touchdown scored of the 21st Silver Bowl was scored by? On second look. Vital. Touchdown. Vital. Ilario Vital. I'll tell you what, that was a tough two yards there that he got there. But he got it. He got it as the Tigers go on board with 9.52 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl. And I told you they had a kicker. I to do the kicking duties for the Tigers are Ramon Lopez, a 10th grader. So he's going to be around for a while. Ramon Lopez, a 10th grader, 6'2", 260. I was going to say he's a big kid. 260, and he's only a sophomore, so we're going to have a lot of him in the next two years. As he's underneath, about to take the PAT, the ball's put down, and it was blocked. A block. Excellent block there by number two, Harrison Smith. Broke through the middle and made the block. I was going to mention your, your kicker. It kind of looks like our kicker, 6'2", oh, yeah. 260. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Sebastian Janikowski is about that size. And too. you know what? I was also going to mention the person who just blocked the kick, but like Dorsett. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I remember that play yeah, against, yeah. Uh, especially against the 49ers. Exactly. You know, we had that play, and uh, thank goodness he made that exactly. play. Exactly. And that's who he just reminded me of. So It was an excellent play by number yeah. two. So the Tigers go up with 9.52 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl played at Laney College. Well, one thing that Fremont did on that, was they did what they had to do, convert on the turnover. Yes, Points sir. after turnover are going to be crucial in this game. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, these two teams are so evenly matched. The points after turnovers. When you get the turnover, you got to convert it. 
you got to convert it because yeah. the opportunities here, yeah. as you can see, these two evenly matched teams, these opportunities aren't going to be a whole lot here in this, this, no, uh, in no, this game got, here. You've got two powerhouse teams that really like to play football and know what they're doing, so it's going to be hard. And as you can see at Laney College, how the stands are starting to fill up here at Laney College. We'll have a packed house by halftime for sure. We have a nice crowd here the day after Turkey Day. You got a beautiful day here. What, yeah. 60 degrees here on a fall degrees, yeah. Oakland day here in Oakland? That's great. This is ideal for football. And I would guarantee you by halftime, Mike, you're going to see them whole stands just really filled up. And now with 9.52 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl, Lopez goes back to kick, back to receive the uh, kickoff for the Titans. is Jonas Davis as well as Limbrook. Limbrook also the starting second baseman for the Titans with some nice skill as well as speed. As he's back there with Jonas Davis as well. Daniel Limbrook, and the ball will be taken by, and there's a whistle. So I guess it'll be kicked over. Ramon Lopez got it up in the air there. Unfortunately, there was a penalty on Fremont. I believe it was an offsides penalty on Fremont. So that'll move him back with five yards. We'll kick. move him back five yards. We kick, we kick. With 9.52 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl, Mario Bobino being assisted by Mike Taylor of the Oakland Raiders Public Relations Department. Now, Mike. Real quickly, let's try to sneak this in here. How does one get into what your field, public relations? I mean, you got to go to school for one. You absolutely got to go to school. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to get into. You got to be able to talk. You got to be able to talk. You got to be able to write. Uh, uh, those are those are the two main factors in terms of what I do. You got to be able to talk, and you have to be able to write. You and you, have you to, started have off. Have at, to be able to write. You started off at a newspaper, right? I did start off as a newspaper. That's, a exactly. newspaper. That's I did, a did some, some media work, some television, radio, good, and uh, newspaper work, but the. The writing, the writing part is, is, a key. is essential. Gotcha. It's essential. You gotta have it. Gotcha. Lopez back to kick and back to receiver will be not Giannis Davis or Limbrook, but it is taken by 33 of the Titans. That is Dwight Elders. As he goes down the sidelines on a good chunk of yardage. Remind me of Dunn of the Raiders there. A great chunk of yardage. A great chunk of yardage. And he wasn't the person that was really supposed to get the ball. Well, he was a short guy. Mr. Elders was a short guy. He took it mm -hmm. and uh, went around the left end. And he got from to left the, to right. <laughs> and he got to the Tigers, what, uh, hmm, 29 uh, yard line? Well, he's on the 32-yard no, uh, line. 32. So he gave Skyline an excellent field, field position. position. Exactly what they needed to hopefully answer a score by Fremont. Exactly. With 9.42 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl. Al Ghani now comes out underneath center. They need a big play by the Titans. As Coach Beam looks on, as you see him in the camera there, tries to draw him off sides, doesn't, drives back to the pass, avoids the pressure, gets the pass off to Rufus. Rufus makes an excellent catch, turns it upfield. Excellent all-around athletic play on all ends of the Titans. I'll tell you what, that play was all El Ghani. He got around, he looted the rush, got out, and he had uh, Mr. Rufus there waiting. Got the pass, turned it up and did what he was supposed to do. Picked up a nice chunk of yard. Absolutely. I mean, because that's important, too. It's, it's important. Your first your first priority as a receiver is to catch the ball. But if you can catch it and turn up field, that's even more excellent. Your, your first is to catch the ball. There Number you one, you're right. Catch the ball. Secure the ball. Catch it. Secure it. And then get yards. There you that go. That young man did all three of them. All three. Algonia underneath center once again. Drops back to pass. Throws a quick screen. Over to Rufus again. Rufus tries to get to the outside. Straight's arm gets into the touchdown, makes one heck of a dot and a touchdown. I'll tell you what, Rufus uh, took that to the house, if you will. He wanted it, too. He wanted it. Rufus got the touchdown, got the ball. Excellent athletic ability. Excellent. Uh, what more can you say about that play? Well, as you said, he showed his athletic ability, not only in terms of catching the ball with his hands, turning up field, straight arming, and getting in the end zone. Exactly. With some extra effort. Rufus Skillerin made the catch and scored. 9.04 remaining in the 21st Silver Bowl in the second quarter. The score is now 6-6 six to six as Placencia will try to make the point after touchdown. The holder is Harrison Smith. Ball is up, Placencia makes it, and the Titans take the lead. Takes the lead, is now at 76 with 9.04 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl. I'll tell you, Mario, that was an impressive drive. Not only the drive, but the, the drive really started with excellent field position on the kickoff return. That's correct. That's, That's correct. what we see where special teams are vital, vital yeah. in this game. That's so true. 
not the Vida Brothers, but yeah. Vida in this game. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, and Mike, I see one of my friends from my, my 10 and 0 football team, Oakland High. I see Fitness John out there, went to Oakland High with me. I see him out there. I wish I could flash him, but I can't. What's up, Fitness John? How you doing? Jonathan Jones, we call him Fitness John. He was on the Oakland High uh, track team that took fifth in state in 1981. Fitness John, Jonathan P. Jones. How you doing, man? Okay, Mike. So, uh, honestly, Mike, since we've been doing the game, we seem to be having a good time. Uh, how, what's your feelings thus far in the game? Well, my feeling, this is a, as, as we talked about earlier in our, uh, in, our, uh, in our intro here, these are very, very, two very closely matched teams. And the good thing that I see is this competition. These teams are competitive. Fremont scored. What does Skyline do? They answer. They yeah. answer with a score. Yeah. And we'll see what happens with Fremont here. And the ball will go over Alberto's hand as he lets the ball go out of the end zone. Now we have a 7-6 ball game with 9-0 remaining in the second quarter. It's going to be, Mario, it's going to be key for Fremont to come in. If they can't score, for them to get some yards here. They're starting at their 20. They have to mount a drive here at least get some favorable field position. If they do have to punt, they need to get it down the field about 20 and 30 yards. That's so true, man. That's so true. That's so true. Because I don't think you want to give the ball back to Skyline right now with, with any type of ideal field position. Skyline seems to have their offense intact. That's so and I don't true. think you want to give the ball back to them right now. No, no, no. They seem to be, um, what is the word, turning it up a notch? They seem to be turning it up a notch there? Well, they seem to be efficient on offense. And, and that's so key. You know, you, in order to, to take it to the next level, you got to be efficient. You know, you got to be efficient, and uh, that's what make good ball games, good ball players in the whole 10 yards. And we have another whistle for whatever reason. I don't know why, but there was a whistle blown there. There seemed to be a delay a game yeah, on delay, Fremont. Delay a game against Fremont. I'll tell you, that's one thing that you want to stay away from. Once again, we talked about those long uh, down and distances there. You want to stay away from those long down and distances here. Yep. You got definitely. first and 15, which is uh, not good. Gennaro back. Gives it to his brother. Ilario, Ilario gets around the corner, doesn't pick up much. Maybe about two good yards yeah. on the carry. Harrison Smith. Came up on the tackle. Yeah, it seems like the Titans are ready to play some ball now. And Josiah Evans made, mm -hmm. made the tackle on that. 8.46 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bar Laney College. I'm Mario Bobbin. being assisted today by Mike Taylor of the Oakland Raiders Public Relations Department. And we're just sitting up here just, 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 just telling you guys about the game and hope you guys are enjoying it on this beautiful day after Turkey Day. 8.29 left in the first half. As Vidal's underneath center once again, what's he gonna do? He gives the ball to Brewer as Brewer gets around the right side but doesn't get much. Tripped up immediately, is that by, uh, that was by Chris James. Chris James made an excellent tackle. You know, I noticed uh, as well as the Titans, as well as the Tigers, both teams have a lot of players that go both ways. I see that, I see both teams have players and that's gonna be a factor heading into the fourth quarter, Mario. And you know what, Mike? be a definite factor, I'm sorry. You know, this is interesting. We have some trivia for you viewers out there, or it may not even be trivia, but something that you should know. You also went to Fremont. I went to Fremont High School. But you didn't go to the Fremont High School in Oakland. My Fremont was a Pathfinder. <laughs> okay. In what county? In Los Angeles. Okay. So you do have something in common with the Tigers of today. I do have something in common. So good. Vito back underneath center, drops back to throw a pass, throws it upfield to Alberto. Oh, couldn't quite get to it. Hey, he's good salesmanship on that. Good acting. <laughs> Very good. Unfortunately, that pass was a little short, which caused it to be incomplete. Yeah, it seems to be, uh, both teams seem to be really into the game now. Seems to get all the jitters out of them and whatnot have you. Once again, we talked in those uh, down and distances here. Now it's still fourth and ten. And Skyline's going to get the ball back at least at midfield with some excellent field position here. Yeah. If they handle the punt. Yes, with 7.34 remaining. Vital back to punt. Gets the ball off beautifully as James will let it bounce as he picks it up. Gets around the left side. Gets around the corner. Tries to cut back across field. He has plenty of room, Mario. Oh, he he is getting some great blocks there. School was in session there, viewers. Schools were in session on that return. Unfortunately, we got a penalty flag. I believe it's holding on Skyline. That was an excellent return, though, by Harrison Smith. Well, he certainly showed his athletic ability, zigzagging, reversing his field, not once, not twice, but three times. But it's unfortunate because now it's neglected. Well, even with that, they'll still have excellent field position. That Skyline, is, that is. That is true. 
with 7.17 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl. I'd like to take a moment real quick to say the doctors for today's games is Dr. Adams as well as Amore Adams. Those are today's team's doctors. And what do we got going on? Mike, you said they had good field position? No. They, well, yeah, I thought it was a spot foul. Unfortunately, it's not a spot foul in high school. They mark it back, way back to where he caught the ball. So it's 10 yards. Yeah. They're starting on the 42-yard line. Skyline. They're on 42. Yeah, they're on 42. Algani underneath center with 7.17 remaining in the second quarter. Algani gives the ball to this fullback, 44, who does not get much, Frank Summers. Frank I'll tell you what, Summers. Donald Horns closed in from his end position and made the tackle. He was really stout at the point of attack, caused the running back to turn it in, and he made the tackle as well. You know, like I said, both teams now got the jitters out of them. So now they're ready to play some ball. These guys are playing some ball, and they're playing some very, very efficient football. Hey, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. I have to take a quick note, Mike, to let you know what Algani did for the year. So far this year, he's thrown, now he has 92 completions, 92 completions for 161 attempts for 1,496 yards and 15 touchdowns with just five interceptions. That Mario. On that play, we had a legal procedure on Skyline. Once again, I'm not calling out Lyman's numbers because the only time you hear a Lyman call in the National Football League is when he <laughs> has a penalty on him. So I'm not going to do it oh, out here. I'm I not going to do it to these kids. Okay, no, no, we won't, we won't do that. See, because in the pros, they can handle it. Exactly. See, the kids would go to school Monday, and they'd be like, hey, man, I was looking at the broadcast on 13. They do such a wonderful job, and I heard them talk about exactly. it. Exactly. They, 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 they pointed you out. Algani underneath center once again. He's dropping back for the pass, looking long to go deep. Almost sacked. The boys have sacked those are deep. Rufus can't quite get to it. Now, you know, if Rufus wouldn't have slowed down, he would have had a chance of catching the I'll ball. I'll tell you what, Remy Jones, number nine, was in on the quarterback, had the opportunity to sack the quarterback. Algani made an excellent athletic play by spinning away and getting the ball off, giving his, his wide receiver an opportunity to catch the ball. Unfortunately, it was just a little long. Yeah. It's so important if you have the opportunity to make the sack to get the sack. It's very important, especially in light of the fact that they almost made a great play in terms of connecting on a long yeah, pass. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like Skyline's not afraid to throw the ball. They, they, they seem to be throwing the ball quite a lot, which I'm kind of surprised because Beam, to me, seems usually he'll just ground it out on him. Skyline's not afraid to throw the ball. They've shown that. They're not afraid to throw it short or not afraid to throw it long either. Well, they're trying to display Galgani's tal talents today. <laughs> Algani throws a screen pass, and the ball was dropped by Lewis, unfortunately. To try to display his talents and they're doing just yet. I'm impressed by the young man. Oh, yeah. Well, he has a lot of schools looking at him. He's a very talented young man, very intelligent, and uh, hopefully when he steps up to the next level, he can continue to play quarterback. I hope so. Here, here. Because sometimes they just don't get to play. They switch him to safety or DB or receiver or whatever. So let's hope this year that, I mean, not this year, when he moves on to the next level, that he will stay at quarterback. He certainly shows some qualities. Uh, in my mind, he certainly shows some qualities for him to be able to stay at quarterback. That's so true. And back to punt the ball for the Titans is Placencia. Back to receive it is Alberto for the Tigers. Ball goes off Placencia's foot. The ball takes an excellent bounce in the Titans' favor as the ball will now roll to the Tigers' 25-yard line with 6.02 remaining in the second quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl. Well, you would have hoped that Alberta would have played that ball, a ball bounced for 10 extra yards. You'd hope they'd play it, catch it, either call for a fair, fair, fair catch or just catch it and go down. But one thing with the return man, if you don't feel comfortable, leave the ball alone, yeah. which is what he did. Yeah, and which is a smart thing. Absolutely. Smart thing to do. I'd like to take time out one more time to mention today's uh, doctor for today's game, Amor Adams. Amor Adams is the OEO team doctor. She has to be at the games in order for the game to go on, Mike. Well, it's very important. I mean, the medical uh, the medical situation as far as these kids are concerned, I mean, let's look out for them. I'm glad that she's here. Yeah, more Adams. Thanks a lot. Underneath center is Janado Vital. As he checks over the skyline, Titans defense drops back, does the reverse to Alberto, does not get nothing because guess who stood there, stood at home? Chris Lockett. Chris Lockett stood at home. Chris Lockson, he played. Chris Lockson stayed at home, made an excellent play. Yeah. Wasn't fooled by the change of direction, made an excellent play, was there. To not only turn the reverse in, but make the tackle. Exactly. For a loss. Exactly. For a loss. Mario, 540 left in the first half here. I'll tell you what, these, these teams, once again, we said that these teams know one another. 
So these trick plays, these reverses and what have you, aren't working. These guys know one another. That's true. I mean, it's all about staying home, too. I mean, that's what the coaches tell you. Hey, stay home. Don't try to hurt, do everything. Just play your position. But you know, that's easier said than done. That's but true. these two teams are doing just that. <laughs> that's so true. Vital over the middle, tries to get the ball to his brother. Incomplete. Unfortunately, he had his brother wide open on that yeah. play. I would have liked to have seen him catch it and see what he can do in the yeah. open field because uh, Lario Vital has not had a whole lot of room in this game. That's true. Well. I'm sorry, Skyline's been doing an excellent job against him. Well, they know who to watch. That's smart. They know who to key on. That's the key. I mean, let's key on the Vital brothers. Hey, let anybody be but the Vital brothers. That's probably what the defensive coordinator, Mr. Cook, is telling the Titans defense. Jerry Cook is the defensive coordinator for the Titans. He's been there for many, many years and has done a wonderful job with their defensive unit. Vital underneath center with third down, 15 yards to go on the 20-yard line. They set up in the wishbone, tries to get the ball. Almost, no flag, and a flag comes in. It was a flag here. And Number one, I did see Darryl Hardy. Yeah, I saw him put his hand on Alberto's arm so he couldn't raise his arm. So I don't think there was any doubt that that was a pass interference. That's so penalty. true. That's so true. That's bang, so true. Bang, bang play. I mean, yeah. a good play by the defender, actually. He got in, but he just got there just a little early. He would have caught just it. Just a tad early. He would have caught it. He would have caught it. Five throw remaining. In the 21st Silver Bowl, Mario Bobino being joined today by Mike Taylor of the Oakland Raiders Public Relations Department. And like I told you, Mike, it's like, a, hey, it's, it's anybody's ball game. We haven't seen any really gigantic big plays thus far, but believe you me, they're coming. Well, the assets, we'll see what happens in the second half, although we still have uh, five minutes left. Five minutes left in this uh, in this first half. But uh, once again, these two teams, once again, the familiarity aspect, these teams know one another. That's so true, and uh, it's first and 10 on the Fremont Tigers 34-yard line. The ball is given up to gut to Brewer. Excuse me, Lattimore, flag comes in. Or yeah, I think you're gonna get a holding penalty. Holding penalty? Play. Okay, let's see what the referee has to say on that. Once again, I'm not saying names. I'm not naming names, but I think you can get a holding penalty, and that's what you got. Yeah, because we, we, we don't do that no more. We, we try not to say names, we try not to. We, we don't want to embarrass nobody. Oh, no, just the good things. Yeah, just the good things. That's all we want to do, just the good things. That's what it's all about. 5.05 remaining in the second quarter. 21st Silver Bowl being played at Laney College on a beautiful day after Turkey Day. That gives Fremont a first and 15 on their own 29-yard line. Did you say? Fremont, okay. first and 15 okay. on their own 29. Okay. They're Four. in the backfield. Yep. They're in the... Wishbone, the world famous Brewer, up the gut, shows a burst of speed. Will he get caught from behind? I don't know. What did I tell you, Mr. Taylor, about Brewer? Mr. Did, Brewer I showed told, his worth. Harrison Smith brought him yeah. down, but not after a gain of, well, a 35 yard gain, it seems like. 50 yard gain, a yeah. 60 yard gain, actually. On that play. And I was just saying, showed quite a burst there. And I was saying somebody's going to do a big play. I said somebody's going to bring in a big play, and he was the man to do it. It's hard to kind of defend a, a wishbone offense when you have an arsenal like that. It's very difficult to defend a wishbone offense. Who's going to get the ball? Especially you have some quality guys, some athletic performers in the backfield. Who's going to get the ball? You never know. You have a certain element of trickery there. You don't know who's going to get it. And any of these guys can hurt you. Like you, we you, just saw. You're guarding for Mr. Vital, and there it goes. Yep. The Tigers are now, Brewer, yeah. bust off on you. and now they're on the 21-yard line, first and 10. And we have a timeout as the referees hold a play. A flag comes in. Did you see what happened, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, I did see what happened. Unfortunately, uh, it's going to be an illegal procedure penalty against Fremont. Okay, legal procedure. we're not going to name names. Whoa, that hurts. You're getting that good a field position. You know, you main thing you, you know, the main thing you want to do is you don't want to go backwards in that in scoring territory. Well, I'll tell you, unfortunately, Fremont's really hurting themselves in this first half with penalties, and, and, and some of these penalties are really needless penalties. The holding penalties you can, you can kind of handle. I mean, that's that, that those happens, but these legal penalty, legal procedure penalties, you can't have that. Balls given to Alario up the gut, picks up around six good yards up the gut. 3.55 remaining. We got most of that yardage back. He got four yards on the play, but now they're still looking at a second and 11. And viewers, the score is seven to six with the Titans with the one point lead. Seven to six in the second quarter, 21st Silver Bowl. Second down and 12 yards to go. The Tigers are on the 22 yard line. 
But what do you think on this play, Mario? Well, you know, it's pretty much wide open. You know, I want to say pass, but I'm into the passing. I play receiver, but then again, with this wishbone offense, I give it to any one of them. Well, I play running back, so let's run it. <laughs> but you know, you're in a wishbone. Running. He does a bootleg Vidal, avoids a couple of tackles, and gets met by a herd of Titans. I'll tell you, number one, Jairus Botters will. Yep. Brought him down and brought him down hard. Hey, you know what's interesting? His cousin married uh, Jet, plays for the Raiders. So he has relations to Jet. Very interesting. That's so true. He uh, talked to him earlier today, and he told me that his cousin, his female cousin, married Mr. James Jet. So his wife is his cousin. I'm very impressed by your knowledge there, Mark. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's my job, Mike, to do the proper research and, and to put out the proper information so our viewing audience understands a little bit more about these players. I'll tell you, I see you every week at the Raider facility doing your thing. And oh, I, yeah. And, and I, I meant to tell you, you do a very good job, by well, the way. Well, thank you very much. I just to say thank you for allowing us to come in and, and, and do the interviews for the kids. Well, what you guys do is very important. It's very important in the community. Uh, it's very important to our players, and our players really enjoy it. It's very important in the community to, to really hear to really hear what the, the national players in the National Football League, specifically the Raiders, to hear what they have to say. I mean, these guys are guys who are very, very conscious, very conscious of their community, uh, very conscious of their community responsibility. So it's really uh, important, and I really appreciate having a vehicle, you being a vehicle, to really get the word out in terms of what these players feel and what they think. Hey, thank you so much. It means a lot to me to know that we're, that we're being recognized here at KDOO TV 13 for our, for our talents. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I just wish my boss, Robert, Robert Lamont, would show me some love at times. You know, he, he doesn't, no, I take that back. He shows me so much love, I can't even show this man, you know, the gratitude that he he, he allows me to have. So he have to, he'll have to get a tape of this broadcast. Uh, oh, yeah, well, no, he's, he's the main cameraman, so you hear what I just said. Robert Lamont, the station manager at KDOL TV 13. Thanks a lot, Rob. Bite on the center, gives the ball to his brother, who doesn't get much. A little cross buck series there, Mario, <laughs> and... Alario Vidal got nothing. Nothing. Now, Mike, we have an interesting situation here, Mike. What do you do? It's fourth down. You got to go for it. 21, you got to no. go for it. You're on the 21-yard line? You're on the 21-yard line. You, you got to go for it, but uh, who am I to say? Yeah, they're going to kick it. They're going to try a field goal here. Well, would you try a field goal? Would you try to, you know? I would, I would. Personally, I would try to go for it, try to get the first down. Not If not the touchdown, get the first down. But, fourth and 14? But they're not going to do it. They're going to they're gonna try a field goal. I think this is a relatively long field goal for a uh, for a field goal kicker, but we'll see what happens with this field goal kicker but once you know, again. He's got size on him, if nothing else. We'll see what kind of <laughs> oh, leg hey, he has. Yeah, you got that right. But I think he's a soccer player. Ramon Lopez will try the field goal from the 25-yard line, gets the ball up, partially blocked. It wasn't partially blocked, but it, he got it. it was wide right. Okay, wide right. He didn't quite get it there. It was short and wide right. I thought somebody, saw, somebody got a hand on it. Okay, viewers, we will take a quick commercial break and we'll come right back with 206 remaining in 206 remaining in the second quarter. We'll be right back. James gets the ball, tries to get to the outside, gets to the outside. He does make it to the outside and picks up some extra yards. He did pick up some That's an excellent run. Yeah. I made two tacklers yeah. miss and got uh, and got the first down. That's what I was so going to say. So here we are with a minute yeah. 24. What, what is uh, Skyline going to do? Are they going to go to the no huddle? Well, they call a timeout here, so we know they're going to call a timeout. They're going to try to score. They're not going to sit on their lead. They're going to try to score, and we'll see what happens here. We'll see if they run the two, the no huddle, the two-minute offense here. That's so true. Uh, and like you said, you know, with 124 remaining, I can't see them doing nothing but trying to put the ball in the air. The way they've been throwing, the way our guys have been throwing the ball, why not? Why not? Why not? And it seems like, I mean, well, their run is going pretty decent for them as well, but with 124 remaining, hey, let's go for it. Well, we've seen that they're able to move the ball down the field. Once again, Agani can throw, and he's got an excellent uh, pair, not only a pair of wide receivers, but those running backs are pretty good too. So why not go for it? Why not try to score here at the end of the first half? Hey, the man threw 15 touchdowns this year, and he threw for 1,400 yards. Actually, 1,500. Then why not? Yeah, you know, so, so therefore... You know, he definitely has the arm. He's been playing quarterback since he played with the San Leandro Crusaders, so. Well, Mario, I think the key was getting that first first down there, that first first down by the run. Now they're in adequate field position here on their uh, their 35-yard line. Now they have an opportunity to really air it out and really try to get down the field. Yeah. So let's see what we got going on with 124 remaining in the 21st Silver Bowl. The Titans will take it from their own 33-yard line. That's uh, very important. I don't think Bean will be too happy with going into the locker room at the 7-6 lead. Well, he has an opportunity here. We'll see if they take advantage of it. Algani kicks it out to Jane, Terry James. Gets around the outside. And he is stripped by the fumble. Fumbles the ball. And the ball goes out of bounds. A lucky break for 
Skyline High School. Yeah. That was a good strip by the Tigers, though. That was an excellent strip by number one, Billy Jenkins. Exactly. Unfortunately, they couldn't get on the ball, though. No, yeah. First and once again, it was a 12-yard great game. First and 10 for Skyline. Yeah, Terry Johnson was stripped of the ball. He's the big power back for the Titans. Well, on that play, he showed some speed, too, then. Yeah, he did. He did. Good heads-up ball playing as Argani's underneath center on the 46 yard on their 46 yard line. Pitches the ball at the end of the pass. Half, half back pass to Giannis. Throws the ball, kicked back by Gennaro by Schreier. I tell you, you know, he impresses me a lot, Gennaro. I know him personally. And Mike, he is the most likable kid you ever will want to meet. Well, I'll tell you what, the kid was not fooled, or Mr. Vidal was not fooled on that play. And he had the guy covered. I mean, he's one of the most talented individuals I've ever seen. Well, in my he showed us—he certainly showed his talent on that play. He was not fooled on a halfback pass. He was able to get back, play his coverage, and intercept the ball. Yeah. And now Fremont has excellent field position. Yeah. With 106 remaining in the second quarter. At their own 47-yard line. So we'll see what happens with them. We'll see if they want to mount an attack here. Yeah. Be in the air. I don't think they have much time. They have a minute six left. I don't think they have enough time to really mount a ground attack. I think they're going to have to go through the air. And, you know, Mike, it doesn't really get too much better than that. You know, I mean, now they have a chance now to swing momentum. They well, got a turnover. They got good field position. They have enough time. Hey, perfect opportunity. Well, not only can I see them going through there, I can see them getting uh, Mr. Vital out on the edge to either uh, give him a, a dual option to pass or run with the ball and get out of bounds if he uh, uh, if he can. So, I, and I'm, you know, it's interesting as well because – Fremont has been in a position to score. Well, you see Fremont's gone with four wide receivers set and one back. So they've broken out of that wishbone trend. And they're going into a passing now game. Vital back to pass. And guess who's that pack? Quarterback, Elario. So now they switched up. Did you notice that, Mike? Did you notice that switch I, I didn't notice that, Mario. But I'll tell you, they tried to fool Skyline by spreading wide and running the ball. It did not work. Yeah, with 51 seconds remaining. As the clock continues to tick down. Elario is now in the shotgun position. Takes a snap from the center. Drops back. Oh, you know what? It seemed like a fake bootleg. Woo, throws the ball away. I thought it wasn't nobody over there, but it was. Try to get the ball to Brewer. I don't know, Mario. I think they're calling the sack on that play. Uh, he, sack. he got the ball away, but I believe they're calling the sack on that play. And you know what it looked I'm like? I'm not mistaken. And it looked like initially he was going to try to to just take off running, try one of them Rich Gannon plays that you guys do. But he ran into his own man. I'm sorry, they called that play incomplete. I'm surprised that the officials called it incomplete. I thought they were going to call the sack because he was in the grasp of the defender. Alario back in the shotgun position, third down, nine yards to go for the first, and they're on their own 42-yard line. Fumbles the ball, gets it back, tries to run around to the right side. He wants to throw deep, throws deep for his brother. Picked off. Excellent play. I'm sorry, it wasn't picked off. Number one. Gerald Hardy had an opportunity to pick the ball off. Unfortunately, he, oh, he didn't get it. I in. thought he got it. Okay. He did not get it. Well, does that hurt you or not? I mean, now they got a punt. I mean, hey. Well, it was the same. It, it would have been the same thing as a punt if yeah. he would have picked the ball yeah. off. So they, the only the only thing is now is that Fremont has the punt. So a lot of things can happen when you punt the ball. And they can take they can take more time off the clock. <laughs> It's 23 seconds left. Well, the, well, there's an incomplete pass, so that stops the clock. No, but on the and now they have, to pay, they have to punt the ball. But actually, on the actual punt itself, I, see, I figure about maybe three ticks may tick off the clock. Three ticks, but you figure that Skyline is going to get the ball back with uh, not, with about 15 seconds to but, go. But not good field position. Not good field position, so we'll see what they do. But to Fremont's advantage, they got Vital at free safety. And he's not going to get beat easily. Vital gets the punt off. As the Titan will let it just bounce, and it's picked up by Alberta. With 16 seconds remaining in the second quarter. I'll tell you what, that was very, very close to getting blocked by Chris James on that. Yes. I'll tell you, Fremont yeah. was very, very lucky that ball wasn't blocked. That's so true. So true. 15 seconds remaining. 21st Silver Bowl being played at Laney College. So what do you do here, Mario? Do you go for it all, or do you just lay it down and go into halftime with a 7-6 lead? You know, I would just sit on the ball. Personally. I agree with you. I was sitting on I mean, I wouldn't want to do nothing foolish here. I could throw a pick. Vital's so talented, he may take it back all the way. I agree with you, Mario. So I would just sit on the ball. We'll see if Mr. Beam listens to us. Right, right, right. And Beam will try to give the ball to Terry James, who will be brought down immediately. And I think the clock will run off. We'll, we'll, we'll run out. 
seven six five four three two one and it seems like we're at the end of the half now we're coming to the closing at the end of the half and um, as you can see hello viewers we're back uh, before the kickoff of the third quarter look who we found we found the vital brothers mario i like that name man and gino Mike was talking about y'all earlier, about y'all doing big things. I'm going to let Mike go on and just, just chop it up with y'all real quick. What I want to find out from you guys is what do you think about seeing your, uh, your little brothers out there playing today? Uh, I see it, man. It's doing cool, man. I see my little brother spinning that quarterback remind me of myself out there. I mean, they just got to go out there and just play their A game in the second half and capitalize on skyline mistakes, and they they be in the dough. First, yeah. first one ever at Fremont. Gino, what do you think about this first half? What do you think about the play in the first uh, half? The first half, they got to minimize on the penalties and, you know what I'm saying, make plays. That's the that's the main thing because they out there, they playing hard. They don't have as much debt as Skyline does, but, you know, when you get your opportunity, you got to go out there and make plays. Mm -hmm. well, tell you, you guys said the same thing that Mario have been saying here for the whole first half. Let me ask you this. Uh, how'd your season go? Or how'd your season go this year? How'd you guys, how you guys doing? <laughs> we went one and, we went one and nine here at Lane College, but we had a, we had a productive season as it, um, like, um, experience wise, cause we have about, um, 35 freshmen coming back mm -hmm. next year. We only graduated 11, uh, sophomores. So we're going to have a, a great nucleus coming back next year. Have so a nice little foundation. Good. Good. foundation. Good. Well, good luck to you guys. Huh? All right. Thank you. And real quick, the positions you guys will be playing. I play cornerback, punt return, kick return. Might play a little, oh, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I'm switching over to the other side of the ball. I'm going to be playing, um, some DB. Probably do it, little Charles Wilson, go both ways, <laughs> kick and turn, punt return, take my brother's spot, yeah, make right. some more plays. <laughs> okay, and real quick, are we saying in that last name right, finally, Vital? Yeah. Because I know I, for many years I mispronounced it, and I blame Mario for Mario knowing me the longest, not telling me. Yeah. 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 Talk to my dad about that, he get it on everybody. Like, it's vital, it's vital, I'll be like, it's vital, man. Now, Mario, you got my number, you should have called me and told me. <laughs> <laughs> I be here more of you be skating on me, man. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Come on down. We'd love to have you. You guys must continue success and come back and holler at us anytime. Okay. Thanks a lot. And before we go real quick, I have somebody help me out on camera a lot. His name is Athedral Thomas, and sometimes the camera goes out of focus or whatnot have you. So I wanted to introduce him. So if he wants to clown me, I'll give him an opportunity to do so. Athedral, how you doing, man? From Skyline, Skyline class of what year? I remember, I'm the class of 91. I remember when he used to mess up my name also. <laughs> he used to call me After Dog Thomas, After Dog, and whatever he used to call me. But it's all good, though. I thank, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to get down here and do my thing. And, and viewers want to let you know, you know, one day I will be hanging on my cleats, and hopefully this will be the man that will be taking my place. That's right. All right? So uh, that's going to be our assessment at halftime. Now we'll be back with the kickoff for the third quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl at Laney College. We'll be back with the kickoff. Top of the Tigers. So we'll see what happens if the Tigers can come back on the Titans, or if the Titans can come back and keep the lead over the Tigers. So true. And Say, he, that, say that quickly five times. I can't. I mean, you kind of threw me off. Back to receive the kickoff for Alberta. Flags come up. What do you think the procedure was there? I don't think they were quite ready. I think they're going to have them re-kick. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this, this half. Now, both teams are where they need to be in reference to their uh, motivation or just basically into the game. I take that back. It's a five-yard penalty on Skyline. So now they're going to kick the ball to 35. It was an offsides on Skyline. Ooh, okay. So that's not the way you want to start off of. <laughs> that is not the way you want to start off the a second third quarter, half. Yeah. Not at all. So, Mike, let me uh, just real quick, we had a chance to just talk with the Vido brothers. What was your impression of them young guys? Well, I was very impressed by the young men. I was very impressed by their poise and their analysis in the first half, Mario. <laughs> what you and I have been talking about this whole first half is what uh, those gentlemen summed up. Yeah. Well, you and I took uh, two hours to say those guys yeah. summed it up in two yeah. minutes. And you know what I like about them? They got a good, like the brothers, they really act like brothers are supposed to act. Well, like, you hear, they're here. You see the bond, and yeah, these guys yeah, are, are here yeah. supporting their brothers who yeah. are playing out here on the field well, right most now. Most people don't do that, you know, and that's what I like about these guys is uh, they really support one another, and um, they're just a loving family. Or I just know the four brothers. I'm pretty sure the mother and father are just, just as wonderful, but they, well, they raised get it from somewhere. Well, hey, they, they raised their kids wonderful. Well, they get it from somewhere, so, so, so you know that it comes right from their parents. So true. As Placencia will now kick off, back to receive the kickoff is Alberta and Vital. Alberto gets it. Takes gets, it on the five. Takes it straight up the gut like Dunn does for the Raiders. He turns it just like Dunn for the Raiders. There he, he goes. He's, he's off to the races. To They're not going to catch him. He's going off 95 yards. Alberta. Big play. No, and they're going crazy. No flags on the play. Touchdown. 
Was that big or what? That was big. I tell you, it was a no-nonsense return, just like David Dunn of the Raiders. Yeah. Hit it right up the gut and see what happens. As soon as I said it, he did the it. Side. Yeah. And, you know, what a way to open up the third quarter. Uh, you got uh, For for Fremont, you got to love it. You're down 7-6. to six. You want to get a spark. You're going to get the ball. Hopefully, you'll get the ball with good field position. But now that they get the ball with good field position, they scored. Now, Mike, quote me if I am not wrong here. In the first quarter, Alberto had a chance to catch a bomb. He had, he didn't quite catch it, but what did I say? You'll have more opportunities. So now, you know, it's going to feel good later on to him when he knows he had made a mistake, but now he came back major. Well, the kid's a player. He's a player. He has talent, and his talent is coming through. Good job. Good job, good job, good job. You know, we were talking about the There's Vito a good brothers. shot of him right there, Alberto on the sidelines, just kicking back. And they're going for the point after touch, and they're going for the two-point conversion. Two-point two conversion was not good. So Score, now we, 12 to 7 in favor of Fremont. 12 to 7 in favor of Fremont Tigers. You know, we were talking about the Vital Brothers, or two famous, uh, famous family coming out of uh, Fremont High School. And uh, you got Dewey Hale to be Lockhart, Dewey Hale and Cal to be Lockhart at Fresno, and the Shavey Brothers at Washington State on Fremont side. That's so true. Then on Skyline, you know, Skyline has some very, very famous alumni as well. I mean, Theodis Brown, who guys my age remember Theodis oh, yeah. Brown. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> and Marvell Smith uh, and uh, Will Blackwell. Pittsburgh Steelers now. for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who the Raiders will face uh, next Sunday, December so 3rd, true. in Pittsburgh. That's so true. Not only that, but some, some great baseball players and Brian Johnson. Uh, of course, in basketball, Gary Payton and uh, Greg Foster. And, of course, uh, your man, Bip, Bip Roberts. Roberts. Bip Roberts. Bip Roberts, excellent. Bip Roberts, he's a... You know, Bip, he's really down for the community, and it's good to see a pro athletes come back and, and do the things that Bip Roberts has done for our community. Well, it's very good to see pro athletes and uh, coming back and giving their community. I know Bip does a lot of that, and, and really, I uh, really enjoy your uh, your forums and your seminars on uh, on KDOL. That's very, so true. Very informative. That's so very true. Very informative. He's the one that gave me the concept. I took it and I ran with it. You do a very good job on that, by the well, way. Well, I try to. I try to. I try to. Thanks a lot, Mike. Here we are now with 11.45 in the third quarter. The score is now 12-7 as Lopez kicks the ball off deep, and it will be caught by Giannis Davis who do the returning. We'll see if Giannis Davis can do the same thing. Gets to the outside. Nobody seems to have a hand on him quite yet. Breaks it up the sideline, still on his feet, and he may go all the way. He is brought down at the Tigers' 27-yard line. And guess who brings him down? Number 45, our man. Alberta, he Paul said, Alberta. you know what? I'm not going to let them outdo me. I just took back a car return, so I will not allow that to happen. That was the situation. So we got Mike, 1131 remaining. You, what, you got great field position on Skyline's part, nonetheless. Here it is, first and 10 on Fremont's 36-yard line. What do we got? First and 10 on the 36-yard line? Number five. Up the gut, brought down by immediately by Larry Lattimore. Number five, Chris James, brought down by Larry Lattimore. And that was a serious stick yes. by the defender to bring Mr. James down. Very big. Excellent job. Mario, this has turned to a game here. We got the fans in the game now. We got the fans in the game now. I'll tell you what, <laughs> these fans are really on their feet here for the second half. You got Mr. James, bounces off sides, a handoff from Algani, gets five yards on the play, which makes it third and three for Skyline. 10.48 remaining in the third quarter. Good game, Mike. Now Skyline put themselves in great scoring opportunity right here. Skyline's put themselves in very good scoring opportunity. Unfortunately, they do it a whole lot with those first two plays. Yeah. And we'll see what happens here, if they can advance and get a first down. If not a first down, to get a score here. But the key to this play right here on third down is to get the first down and keep your scoring opportunity alive. True. Very true. Algani under center. Have a flag comes up. Once you got an illegal motion penalty here on Skyline. Once again, these penalties are, are coming up and biting. Both teams, actually, but here they're biting Skyline. Skyline is not starting this third quarter very well at all. Started with an uh, all-size penalty on the kickoff, which will return for a touchdown, and here they are. They have a scoring opportunity. They have an illegal motion penalty, and here they are on third and 11. Whoa. And a crucial point in the game, yeah, Mario. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they had the momentum to be swinging their way, and then all of a sudden, flat out. 
They're moving themselves backwards. I'll or tell you what, no first down here. You got. I, I would think you have to go for it on fourth down. Whoa. Uh, ground underneath center. Josh back to pass. He wants to go deep. Throws it deep. The ball was a little deflected, and it was caught by the big skyline Bowers. Jairus Bowers. You know, I, I think that play was intended for, for another gentleman on the play. I believe that was a, uh, intended for Rufus Skillern, but the ball was deflected. Correct. But the big play guy came up big, Jairus Bowers. Jairus Bowers caught it. That's the key. He caught it. He caught it for a gain of 14 and a first down to keep Skyline's drive alive. Big play there, big play. Ball is given to Terry James. I told you he's a big power back. He scores. Touchdown. touchdown. 15 yard touchdown. Did I not tell you, play. Mike? I told you. I'll tell you what, he showed some burst. He saw the hole and he exploded through the hole off tackle, showed burst and got into the end zone. And all I can say is we have a game. We have a game. Terry Johnson, the left fielder for the Skyline Titans baseball team. What do you do here, Mario? Do you go for two to take the lead or do you tie the game? Well, He's John B's go, made his decision. Well, they're, yeah, well, they're up anyway because the score is 13 to 12. So, you know, he likes, I mean, he likes his kicker. He likes his PAT. I stand corrected. You're right. They're up. Now they're going to go up by two, is yep, it? Yep, yep. Uh, yes, they will. 14-12 in favor of Skyline High School. I'll tell you, Mario, we've uh, we've got some uh, some real fireworks here starting in the third quarter. Is this uh, is this a uh, indication of what's to come here? I in hope so, half? you know, because the main thing we want to do is we want to keep our viewing audience tuned in. And then, you know, if the game's a blowout, then it's not exciting. So uh, I hope they can keep continue this, uh, what do you call it? This tennis match. That's exactly what it is. Ebb and flow as far as this game is concerned. Exactly. And uh, well, it's only there's 9:34 still left in the third quarter, yeah. so there's a lot of football still to be played. And, and it can go either way, either way. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, Mr. Alberta has another opportunity. Not only he, but Delario Vital are back here in the kickoff return. Both of these guys are very, very dangerous kickoff returners. We'll see what happens here. In fact, we'll see if Skyline elects to even kick to these guys. I don't know if that would be the most prudent thing to do, but but they're going to do it. Why not? Kicking off is Fabian Placentia for Skyline. And he puts his foot in it. He gets an excellent kick for a touchback. As it goes over Alberta's head. I'll tell you, one way to stop these guys from returning those kicks is to kick it in the end zone. You're right. Hey, you know what, Smart? You do not want him to get the ball. You do not know, and, and that the kickoffs are very, very important, as the Raiders have seen this year with Sebastian Janikowski adding him. The Raiders are first in the league in kickoff return coverage, so a big part of that is having Sebastian Janikowski boot them into the end zone and uh, not having any returns at all. So that's a very, very important part of your special teams. So, Mike, how's his foot doing these days? His foot is fine. Good. Unfortunately, he had that little condition. Right. His foot, but he's doing just fine right now. Good, good, good. Real good. Yeah, because we saw him kick last week against the, the, the uh, Saints. Did a good job as well. Uh, he's back. He's back in the, he's back in form now. Good. Thank goodness for us. And you guys just got another addition, Terry Kirby, right? Got another addition. Um, sure Bay Area fans are very familiar with him. He played for the 49ers for three years, so Definitely. he's a welcome addition. And the ball's hiked over Vito's head, but he gets the ball, throws it, and he throws it out of bounds. I'll tell you what, sometimes that was an excellent play by Vital. The fact yeah. that he got the ball, number one, and limited a turnover. Number two, he got rid of it to, to not allow a, a loss. You know, one thing, Mario, as far as quarterbacks are concerned, oftentimes the best play by a quarterback mm -hmm. is really to throw it out of bounds. There you go. And a lot of people don't understand why, Mike, so can you explain it to them, please? Well, first off, uh, the ball went over his head, so mm -hmm. that was a, uh, a possibility of a turnover. So he did secure the ball, and secondly, when he got the ball, he was able to use his athletic ability to get outside and throw it out. So instead of second and 20, it's second and 10. And we also have our superintendent of the schools here, David Chaconis. He's David here. here on the sidelines yeah. here. Yeah, he's here. We're going to show a shot of him. So, see, even the superintendent of our schools will come out and support the Silver Bowl. Going deep for Alberto doesn't quite come up with the ball. Excellent coverage by Chris, Chris James. And there goes Mike our superintendent. There goes our superintendent, Mike. Dennis Chaconis here at the game supporting the OAL. Yeah, look at him. I mean, that's good when you have a superintendent of the schools can come out and patronize a football game like this. He has a concern for our student athletes, and that's why he's out here today. Well, it's important is necessary for the superintendent to show his support, because if it doesn't come from the top, then where's it going to come from? You're so right. You're so right. You're so right. It's good to see him out here. I wish we could say something to him, but we're way up here. He's way down there, so you're doing an excellent job, superintendent. Well, I'm sure he's sending his regards. Oh, yeah. 
Dennis Jaconis. Dennis Jaconis. As the Tigers now come out on their 20-yard line, third down and 10 yards to go. This is a key, a key down for uh, for, for Fremont. They got to get out of their hole. And what are they going to do? They're going to run for it. Not it much. Did not get much at all. They're going to have to punt the ball now, Mario. That's correct. With nine, fourth, fourth and ten, deep in their territory, they got to punt the ball. Now I, I see a little. I don't want to say swing changing here. It seems like the Titans are trying to take it to that next level. Well, you can definitely see a swing changing. And we talked about fatigue. We talked about fatigue earlier. I can see Skyline running off the field. I can see Fremont walking off. So we'll see what happens here yeah. late, later on in the game. We'll see if uh, fatigue, in fact, sets in for Fremont as it did during their first meeting yeah. in the OL game with uh, Fremont leading 21-0, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, 20 to nothing. Uh, 20 to nothing. 20 to nothing, but... You know, we got 8.43 remaining in the third quarter. The 21st Silver Bowl played at Laney College. I'm Mario Bobbin being assisted by Mike Taylor on the play-by-play, -play, as well as the color analyst. Once again, here we have a penalty. These needless penalties, these legal motion penalties are needless. I mean, those are penalties that you want to avoid at all costs. As I mentioned earlier, the holding penalties, those things are going to happen. But these illegal procedure penalties, you can't have it happen. And oftentimes that happens because it's a factor of fatigue. These guys get tired, and uh, mentally they, they, they aren't in it. Yeah, that's so true. And he punched the ball. The ball goes out of bounds. I'll tell you, once again, that ball was almost blocked by a host of Skyline defenders. Mario, he was very fortunate to get that ball off. Yeah, that very is true. Fortunate. But he got it off. That's the main thing is he did get it off. And it's so key, Mike, because, you know, you don't want to have a block punt or nothing like that. You know, that's so important. You don't have a block punt, but nonetheless, Skyline has excellent field position at Fremont's 37-yard line. Yeah. Excellent field position. Whoa, and you know, with the way the way things are going for the Titans right now, whoa, they may punch it in. Well, I'll tell you, this is, a, this is a, a very, very important series for Fremont High School. They really have to dig in and play some defense here, Mario. That's true. Our guy in underneath center gives the ball to Chris James, tries to get the sweep, cuts it inside, picks up a good chunk of yardage. On Skyline's part, that's exactly what you want. You want seven yards on first down. On Fremont's side, you want to try to stop these guys right here, right now. Right now. And they need a momentum change right now because I do see things swinging in their favor. Most definitely. As I mentioned earlier, you see the Skyline guys running on, running off. So you see Fremont's standing around, a lot of guys with their hands on their hips. So hopefully fatigue won't be a factor here. So true. So true. So true. Our guy underneath center. Gives the ball to Chris James. Takes it up. Got let by a host of linemen of the Tigers. Including number 66, Johnny Brown. We hadn't we hadn't called his number in a long time here, Mario. Yes, so true. So true. I'd like to take a moment out to talk about Stephen Bell. He's a very talented uh, defensive and offensive lineman for the Fremont Tigers. I, I know his mother. She went to my high school. Very, very good mother. Good mother. So I just want to just give her a quick shout out and props because she's doing a wonderful, wonderful job with her son, Stephen. Not wonderful, excellent. Oakland High, baby, all the way. Terry James on the outside, gets around the corner, breaks the tackle, will go one-on-one -on -one with the free safety, and he is brought down by number one of the Tigers, Billy Jenkins. Billy Jenkins saved a touchdown. 7-09 remaining in the third quarter. First and 10 now. Is that Jerry Johnson on the, on the tackle? On the run there. On the run there. Uh, that was Terry James. Excuse me, Terry Johnson, you were correct. Terry Johnson on the run, brought down by Billy Jenkins. I was impressed by that young man, that young man's balance, his versatility, his yeah. ability to get outside, keep his feet, yeah. get extra yardage. Yeah. So true. Once again, we got a timeout here. It's very interesting to me to see how the coaches come out on the field to gather around and get an opportunity to really discuss the issues with their entire team. So here it is, 7.09 to left in the third quarter here. You have Skyline ahead, 14-12. Skyline driving, driving deep in Fremont's territory here, driving. They got it first and 10 on the 11-yard line. So, Mike, what we got here? We got it first and 10 on the 11-yard line here. Skyline driving in. I'll tell you. Now, once again, we, we keep harping on it, but it's very, very important for Fremont to really mount a challenge, a defensive challenge here and a defensive stop. It's That's very true. important. And this That's game true. is not out of hand by any means, but we've seen that Fremont scored 
in a variety of ways. And uh, uh, hey. unfortunately, it hasn't been in long drives. If they score here, it may get out of hand. Well, let's hope not. Let's keep this game competitive. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm with keep you all the way. There. No, no, no. Hey, hey. I'm, I'm with you all the way, Mike. I've gotten underneath City's back for pass, throws the ball, throws the fade pattern to Rufus. And it seems like, I don't, I'm not going to say the throw was rushed, but the timing was off there. Well, I'll tell you, Lario Vettel had excellent, excellent coverage on that play. I mean, the kid wasn't, Rufus wasn't going to get inside. Vitell had inside technique. He wasn't going to, Rufus wasn't going to get inside. And when he broke out, Vitell broke on it, used his quickness and speed to close. But it seemed like he was trying to do like a fade route. Like he that. was, he was trying to do a kind of a post corner route. But right. as I say, Vitell had it covered all the way. That's right. That's right. I can see the kids very technically, Vitale, that is very technically sound. I can see him playing actually defensive back on the next level. That'd oh, no, most level. definitely. And the fundamentally sound, this kid has got some good skills. He just carried the ball for the Titans. Well, speaking of uh, Kurt Johnson. Kurt Johnson there. Kurt Johnson. Got a couple of tough yards. Actually, it's a yards. very, very important play for Fremont once again. It's third and, third and seven. Third and seven. Fremont. Deep. Deep. I'm sorry for Skyline. Yeah. Deep in Fremont's territory. They're on their own. They're on uh, Fremont's 11-yard line. Third down, seven yards to go with 6.37 remaining in the third quarter. The score is Titans up 14, Tigers 12. Two-point lead right now, but the Titans are marching and knocking on the door right now. I'll tell you, John Beam is very, very upset with his team. He's very upset with his team. He's really on one of these players. I think uh, he wanted to call a play. He didn't have his right personnel in, and he's very, very very upset about that to the point where he had to call a timeout Mario well, I mean he's, he's a perfectionist you know there's, so there's something that, that, that's not right and he, he noticed it you know which is important and, and as you look now in our stands you can see how we're almost here at a sellout at the 21st Silver Bowl at Laney College you know it's, it's impressive to me to see uh, the see these folks who are really supporting and supporting these kids supporting this cause and supporting the OAL hey, I mean you got the superintendent out here Dennis Chaconis you got the fans you got the cheerleaders doing their thing. It doesn't get no better than that. Well, that's what you want. You want these kids to be supported. They deserve to be supported. These kids are pouring their heart, their guts, their time, their energies, and they're playing this game. Playing this game is a very important game, the Silver Bowl game. Coming out and support these guys. Yeah, that's true. That's why I'm here. You're right. You're right. We will go back and get a shot of the Fremont cheerleaders. Out down into center, third down, seven yards to go. The ball is on the nine-yard line. I think it's time for Rufus, Rufus Skiller here. Rufus Skiller. And Algani draws him offside. Big play. Big play for the Titans. Big play, but fortunately for Fremont, it will not give him a first down. But what it does give Skyline is the equal opportunity for pass or run. It's going to be third and about two. Yeah. What do you do? You have the opportunity to pass or run on this play. Yeah, button. yeah. And, you know, I would go for the pass because they're thinking more than likely run. Well, I think they're going to give the ball to Jerry Johnson. I'm Jerry, sorry, Terry, Terry Johnson. Johnson. Terry yeah. Johnson. Yeah, he's a big power back. And Mike was right, right up the gut. He, does he get in? He doesn't get in, but he does get to the one and yard line. He does line. get the first down, and though. He does get a first down. Yeah. So, so now we have a timeout by the Tigers. And no, now I take that back. I think they're going to measure. No, they're not. They're going to give him the first down on the first play. First down. Ooh, okay. First and goal from first the one yard goal. line. First and goal from the one yard line. 619 remaining in the 21st Silver Bowl being played at Laney College. I'm Mario Bobino being assisted by Mike Taylor of the Oakland Raiders, Public Relations Department. So they're knocking at the door once again, Mike, and um, Fremont has been known to make a very big play in a crucial situation such as this. And well, uh, Recent memory, we do recall back in the first quarter where uh, yeah. Fremont defender picked off the pass deep, deep in their own territory. But I don't think they're gonna, I don't think they're gonna pass here. And they give the ball up the gut to Terry James. Does he get in? No. The Tigers' defense holds up well, being anchored. Stop defense by Stephen Bell. Big Stephen Bell went to school with his mother. Big Stephen Bell made an excellent play on that. And Stephen Bell, he's listed as a senior, 6'6", 305, Mike. Well, I'll tell you what, he threw a 6'6", 305, all of it on that play. Yeah. Big and made the tackle. Now we have a second down, one yard to go. And they're also on the one-yard line. Actually, I think they may have lost a little bit. I think it's uh, on the two-yard line now. Okay. Big, big Steve Bell stretched out on he that stepped, one. He ste he's stepping to the hole really, really beautiful. Underneath center, Algani. Gets the ball to Terry James up the gut. And does he make it in? No, he doesn't. Not quite. No, he doesn't. I think he, did he fumble? The Tigers are saying he did fumbled. He fumble? 
But they called the ball dead, so they're not going to give him the fumble. W.C. Brewer made a tackle on that play. He penetrated and made the tackle on that play. Shot the gap and made the yeah, tackle on that yeah. Now, this is big here, Mike. This is big here because of the fact it's third down. Well, I would think you're in two-down territory here. I would think four skyline. Although you're 14, I would Field goal would, would, would really serve them well, but we'll see what happens with the third down play. They've been running up the middle on first and second down on uh, uh, against Fremont. We'll see what happens. Although Fremont has those big guys, Mr. Yeah, Bell at 305. Yeah. So I don't You're think not going to move him. No. Nah. Nah. You may want to decide to hit the flanks here. Well, you know what I would do? Algani, I mean, I would try a Raider Gannon bootleg. I'd give the ball. <laughs> I'd give the ball to Terry Johnson. He's again, huh? got, he, Again. Algani in each center. He's going back to throw the fade route to Rufus. Knocked away by, it's picked off. Oh, he knocked it away. That was a big play by number five for the Tigers. Anthony Hirsch. Anthony Hirsch made a big play, but there's a penalty. I believe there's going to be a personal June. foul penalty there. He, made, he must have said something to the opposing player there. They called a penalty. That would be a horrible, horrible Ooh, call. Let's hope not. Let's hope that's not the, the situation at hand here. Unfortunately, it is. Dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike conduct on Fremont, which gives Skyline the first and goal. Four more scoring oh, opportunities. That's not good. That was a crucial, a crucial call, a crucial yeah. play. Yeah. That was unfortunately. I mean, these kids are playing. These kids are playing hard. I don't want to say anything about the officials, but but uh, that was not a good opportunity to get a personal foul penalty. And, you know, you know you're going to get emotional. You know what I mean? They're only kids. They don't really know about the college and the pro range, but you can't say nothing, so. Well, Mr. Hirsch made a great play. First of all, he made a great defensive play to deflect the ball. And now, unfortunately, Fremont's. The roll tape at three, two, one. And we're back now with the uh, third quarter, four away remaining in the third quarter, with the Titans on the verge of scoring again. Now, Mike, this is strange because you just said, a, you know, it's still fourth down, though. So That's, I don't think they changed the yard markers. I think the official is going to go over and change the yard marker to first down right now. Okay. They haven't, though. The chain still says fourth down. This is rather out here. We'll see what happens after this play. But yeah. I believe it's first down. I, I believe it's first down, too, but for whatever reason, it's, it says fourth down, fourth and one. You know what? It may be a moot point here, Mario. Okay. True. Chris James, he gets in. The point was moved. Touchdown Titans. Chris James gets in. Off tackle right gets him into the end zone. As the Titans now take a 20 to 12 lead with 4.02 remaining in the third quarter. Hey, Mario, I don't want to look ahead too much, but this PAT opportunity here is crucial. You got an eight point advantage for Skyline. Fremont can come back, score a touchdown, and a two point conversion, and tie the game. So. We'll see what happens here. You see Skyline's going to line They're up for go a PAT. Just regular PAT. A one-point PAT, which is very, very crucial in this game. This yeah. is a very important point here. Yeah, Placencia back to go for the extra point after the touchdown. Gets the ball away. He gets it up. You know, he's been, he's been consistent, Mike. He's been very consistent. He's been, in fact, he's been more than consistent. Yeah. He's been putting the ball through the uprights. And there's nothing more than having a reliable kicker. You know what I mean? I'm it's pretty not, sure you know about oh, that. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, but we're talking at the high school level because most of the time in, in the pros and as well as uh, college, they know. Well, you should, you would think it'd be automatic in the pros and college, oh, yeah. but, it, but, it, but it isn't. Yeah. But as you said, here at the high school level, to have a, a kicking uh, uh, a kicking threat, a kicking opportunity, a kicking threat, I should say, it's, a, it's very important. And it is definitely to the advantage of the team who has that. This young man has, uh, has done very well, not only on his PATs, which he's converted three for three, but on his kickoffs as well. It's true. It's so true. Except for one. Yeah. So now, I mean, it's like it's do or die. Even though it's not really mm, totally out of the situation quite, quite yet with the score. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of, lot, a lot of time left in this game here. There's four minutes left in the third quarter, and we have a whole fourth quarter to go. But I'll tell you one thing. I see Fremont a little, hanging, hanging their heads a little bit. Hopefully they can get back, and we'll see what happens as far as this kickoff return is concerned. Yep. And back By to our the man. Seat. Alberto, will he take it out? No, he will stay in the end zone. He was back about eight yards deep. Didn't want to take that chance. Can't blame him for it. Cannot blame him for it. This is a very, very important series for Fremont High School in terms of them having the opportunity to get back in this game, Mario. So true, so true. So now, okay, you're down by what, uh, hmm, 27 points? No, eight point, eight point lead here. 
But once again, one thing I don't like, I don't like the body language here. I see Freeman walking, and I see some body language that I don't like at all. That's so true. Well, it's up to the coach to pep him up a little bit. It's not over. Far from over. Now it's all about going to your bag of tricks and going with them big plays. Delario's now a quarterback. Underneath center, they do the wishbone. He gives him the bull. He stopped immediately by the Titans' defense. I'll tell you what, the Titans' defense stacked up and was very, very stout on that play yes. for a gain of one, if that. Whoa. Now, that's, that's interesting. You notice how the uh, quarterback situation for the Tigers, how first you start off with Gennato, but now we have Ilario at quarterback in the Wishbone offense. That being the case, I'd like to see uh, Gennato get the ball a little bit and see what he's like on the open field. Well, you know, I seen him play earlier in the season, and, you know, he's really a heck of a receiver. I guarantee you, Mike, if they throw any type of pass in his direction, he will come up with the catch. I'll tell you what, it's, it's really necessary for Fremont to get back in this game. It's necessary for him to get the ball in his hands. I agree. They're back to pass. They do a draw. Delario avoids a tackle, gets the ball over to Brewer. Brewer makes the catch and just barely comes up short on the first down. It was pure athletic ability on, on, on both Lario parts. Vitales. On both parts. Vital, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't the yeah. family. Yeah, because their father's going to get upset. On Lario Vital's part, that was pure athletic ability on his part. He made the play. Yeah. And that was a big play. So now we have second, no, third and one on the Titans 19 yard line. No, excuse me, key, the key, Tigers 19 yard line. Key play, Mario. Key play for Fremont High School right now. Yeah, very key. Very key. We're talking so key. Hey, they get the first down, they can continue their advancements down the field. Well, the key, the key here, you're right, is just to keep this drive alive. That's true. Here we have a timeout on Fremont. And once again, it's very important. So I don't blame them for taking a timeout right now. You want to make sure you're on the same page because, once again, this is a very, very important play for Fremont High School. That's true. That's true. I wonder what Walker's, but he's, he's walking out there to his team, talking with his team right now. What do you think he's telling them? I'm sure he's saying the same thing. Let's get the first down. We have third and one. Let's get the first down and keep our drive alive. Yeah. We're in this game. I'm sure he's telling them we're in this game. We're right there. All we need to do is mount a drive. Yeah. Keep the drive alive. What's immediate? Third and one. Third and one is immediate. And after that, let's keep it driving because they are in the game, Mario. It's true. They're still close. The momentum has changed, yeah. but they are still in the game. I mean, Take them out of drive and get a score, and we have a whole other quarter to go. And the game's still early on. Like you said, you got, we have a whole other quarter to go. We got three minutes remaining. They're on their own 29 yard line, third and one. This is crucial coming up right here. Very crucial. Lario Vitel under center. In the wishbone offense, the Tigers, as the ball is given to Brewer, gets a couple of yards, and I believe he has the first down. He does have the first down. So we would continue to advance. I'll tell you what, Fremont is really sticking to their game plan. You don't see them throwing a whole lot. You see them really sticking to their game plan, running up the gut, using their running backs, and not really using their wide receivers a whole lot. So you got to commend Fremont for really sticking with their game plan because there's still a whole lot of football left to be played here. That's true, but if they do wish to do so, I think the pass will kind of be over for them because the Titans really aren't expecting them to pass. That's exactly what I'm saying. They're sticking with their game plan. So they are running. They aren't panicking, if you will. They're sticking you see with their they game got plan. Alberto playing like the tight end position, so they do have somebody with some speed that can catch. Well, I can see them going to him on this play. Exactly. And we both called it. Big, big play, Mike, by a big player. Did we both not call it or what? Well, you can see it. You can see it. You can certainly see it in the coming. And, uh, Alberta gets up slowly. I think he has. Uh, I think he has a little, little cramps. Cramp, here. Little cramp, a little cramps. Cramp. Ain't too serious. We can continue to play, which is important. How do we both see? That's because we both have football skills. There you go. I mean, that's what it is. So You're right. Kid came up with the play though. Yeah. The thing about it was, is we knew. And that's about. I didn't know. Hey, and that's about his fourth catch. He, he got to be at least like 80 yards, over 80 yards now. Reception. He's playing a good game. Yeah. He has his numbers yards. are up there. Yes. Yeah. That's true. And like you said, Mike, hey, don't go nowhere. We were 2-15 remaining in the third quarter, man, with a 21-12 lead. They're, uh, they're on the 30, Skyline's 32-yard line. And they're spreading out now. They're four wide receivers. They got a spread package. I can see them running, though. Draw play. Gives it up the gut. It's a big number 20, and we have a flag on the play. Unfortunately, one of that flag again. The laundry's out once again. Yeah. And I believe you can have a holding yeah. field. Let's hope you're holding against the Tigers. 156 remaining in the third quarter. 21st Silver Bowl being played at Laney College. I'm Mario Bobbin, being assisted by Mike Taylor. 
of the Oakland Raiders Public Relations Department. As the Tigers will be moved back. Oh, they'll be moved back to the 32-yard line. No, excuse me, the 40. As you can see, they're working on Paul Alberto on the sidelines here. He has some cramps. They're working yeah. and rubbing him down. It's very important, Mario, to get him back in the game. I was going to say a big play by. Hey, yeah. Mike. Big play player. You and I both know sometimes you got to play a little hurt. Oh, no doubt about it. You a big If you're a big play player, you got to get back in there. He's been just that. Yeah. They need him. Once again, Fremont spreads it out. Four wide receivers, Fight one back on the in the shotgun. backfield. Uh, not complete. Trying to go to Brewer. What we got here now, we got second and 20. No, third and 20. The Tigers on the Titans 40-yard line. One minute and 30 seconds are remaining in the third quarter. You have second down here, Mario. And, and for Fremont, I think you want to get part of, the, part of that, that, uh, that yard is back. You don't want to have to get it all back at one time, but they can get 10, 12 yards and leave them at third down and eight or nine. That's true. That's so true. 130 remaining, vital underneath center. Drops back for the pass. He's going to take off. He doesn't really know what he wants to do with it. He, does he want to run or throw it? Brought down by Jerry Johnson. Mario, I think he got a uh, face mask penalty. And it a, was. A 15-yard face yes. mask penalty, which is exactly what Fremont needed. Yes. And exactly what Fremont didn't want to happen right now. And, but guess who put him out of the hole with that? The power runner, Terry Johnson. I mean, he had him. I don't know what he put his hand around his face mask for. Well, he wasn't the power runner. He was the uh, defender, the linebacker on that play. True, 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 true. But he's their power runner. I was just, just a little reference, just a little reference. You could also catch him on the baseball field hitting home runs. Because he, he whacks him out the ballpark, man. Would you like to give a hat off to the Titans? Uh, Coach Limbrook, they took the base series last year. So we'll look for them to do big things again in the OAL baseball season. Mario knows it all, huh? Matter of fact, Mike, if you ever have some free time, go check out some Oreo basketball. I will certainly do that. It's fantastic. In second and 20, ball on the 40-yard line. Vido back. It's a great formation for Fremont once again. Shotgun position. Ball, ooh, hey, thank goodness they blow the whistle, huh? Well, you had legal procedure on the flanks here. You had number five. For the Tigers, yeah. well, once Anthony Hurst. I'm sorry, I said I wasn't going to do that, didn't I? Yeah, but if the Let's play say you had continue, some movement. Okay, let's say you have to move, but if the ball, if the play, if the whistles wouldn't have been blown, that would have been like over his head. It would have been a broken play. Well, we got to remember last time it, it was hiked over his head. He got it and went out and made a good play by uh, True. just throwing the ball away. So, True. Uh, you don't want that to happen, True. but if it does, Mr. Vidal is one who can certainly at yeah. least yeah. potentially well, make something happen with it. Well, you want an athletic individual back there anyway, and he's athletic and he got major skills. So when he gets his hands on the ball, anything's liable to happen. Which is what you want, right? You want somebody back there. Hey, if, if, a, if a play is blown or broken, I still got somebody that can get me out of it. Absolutely. Get a spread formation here for Fremont once again. As he's back to pass, vital. Rolls right, looking, for, looking to put the ball up, looking for a receiver, and he decides to take off. He throws the ball for the end zone. Big, oh, that was a big play. Almost caught. Almost caught by Dominic Woods, the junior wide receiver DB. Almost. Dominic almost came up big there. The ball was in his hands, just came up a little short. Josiah Eddins, number five, I'm sorry, number 15, made an excellent play on that. For the Titans, oh yeah, oh, I can't take credit away because it was a big play by the Titans. Big play by Jehonas Elders. Eddins, Eddins, Jehonas Eddins. Jehonas Eddins. Big play. Yeah, Josiah Eddins. He Josiah Eddins. Yeah, he definitely made a good play on that. The same thing. One more time, Mike. Just we get Elias Eddins. Elias Eddins. Vital back. Third and 20 on the 44. Ball really uh, messed up. He muffed the ball, basically. He couldn't catch it. I don't think it really matters. I think the kid is. He underthrew that ball. But, but I, I think when the kid gets the ball in his hands, he's excited. I mean, he really is. Yeah. But see, that time, he lost the handle, but he really didn't get a good grasp of his receivers. Now it's fourth down here. Fourth down at the. Uh, at Skyline's 44-yard line. You, you got to go punt. for it? You got to punt? No, I would punt it. I mean, because their defense is doing an ex ex exceptional job. Point K, well. Well, fourth and 25, 28-yard line, and 28 yards ago, you got to punt. You're right. Yeah. You're right about that. I Just mean, play field position. You're right about that. I mean, Mario. Fremont does have a, a you know, good defense. I mean, they haven't really given up too much. The reason why Skyline's been able to score is because of special teams. Well, there's 28 seconds left to go in the third quarter, so there's plenty of time to, to, to play here. Exactly. You got to punt. 
Yeah, because if this was the fourth quarter, it would be different. Partially blocked. This is big. Skyline came up very big. The, the punt was blocked. I believe it was blocked by Terry Johnson. I believe it was blocked by Terry Johnson. Big play. And it was Terry Johnson. I'll tell you what, they've been close all day. I yeah. think I mentioned that earlier. They've been close to blocking one of those punts, and yeah. they got it done now. Finally, huh? Big play, boy. I tell you, don't I'm sorry, Mario. There, there are this laundry on the field once again. We'll yeah. see what it's about here. I believe it's against. Well, I don't know. I'll be assuming. I don't want to assume. We'll let the referees. Looks let like them. it's going to be marked off against Skyline. Big, big penalty. Woo! And a major one. Matter of fact, they get to punt it over again. So therefore, whoa, that was a big play in reference to the Tigers. Now, you see, they got to punt again. We didn't get a call from the official as to what that penalty was about. But you know what, Mike? Look, now, look, look at the field position now. Now things change. I think I would possibly go for now it. Now things change greatly. Yeah. Another, and another, flag. another penalty flag. And this against Beam. He's upset. Look, can we get I'll a shot? Can we get a shot of the Skyline Coach Beam? He is upset about something. He's about to tear out his head. Look at him. Coach Beam has to get his composure here, Mario. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I don't see him get too upset, but you see this upset there. See, that gives Fremont a first down. At the 20 yard line. Here. Big with 13 seconds left in the third quarter, Mike. I tell you, don't get too much more exciting than this. I'll Beam you, is not impressed. Fremont has an excellent opportunity here to get on the But what happened? I mean, we never got any clarification on what, what, he, what, what happened. Obviously, John Beam was upset about the earlier call, which we didn't get an explanation on. We got no call on the earlier call, which was a 10 yard mark off against Skyline. But nonetheless, Skyline had the ball. Exactly. Now here with the 15-yard yeah. yeah. unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, not only does Fremont get to keep the ball, but it's first down on the and 20. That's into the quarter. That's into the quarter. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come back. And uh, Fremont has an opportunity to take advantage of some, some breaks here, some good breaks, not only the kickoff return and... Uh, and on a turnover, but back here on these penalties, these penalties that was kept that last drive alive, which allowed them to, to score. When they, Mario, look back. They were, it was fourth and 30. Yeah. And they were about to punt the ball, got the ball blocked, yeah. the punt blocked. Yeah. And what came of it? They yeah. got a touchdown. So true, so true. So you really never know. Either one of these teams, what's really going to happen or what's going on? It has definitely changed here. Now it's a matter of Fremont playing some defense to try to get the ball back. Yeah. Because we notice now how Fremont has the big plays. They have these big plays. They have these big play tendencies, which means if they get the ball, more than likely, they can take it in. You're right. Now, Skyline's part, they've shown the the, uh, the ability to put together long drives. And what Skyline needs now, more than anything, is to put together a long drive. That's so true. So true. Lopez kicks the ball deep. It would be taken by Sanders. No, by, not by Sanders. By Limbrook, he gets the ball, tries to go right side for the wedge. Tries to get to the outside. Does get up the field a little bit. Still on his feet. Big play again. It's killing the Tigers every time. Being brought down by a bird. That was an excellent kick return to get the ball back. Fremont's 46 yard line. That's the start. Second baseman for the Titans, Daniel Limbrick. Daniel Limbrick, his father's the coach, but that's not why he's, he starts. He starts because he got skills. He showed them off on that play. See, definitely. Now, what, what do they do here? Does Arngani, does, does uh, Skyline kind of try to sit on this league, work the clock, or do they uh, use their arsenal like they've been doing? No. Uh, in the, at least in the first half. I would go with Terry James and Terry Johnson the entire rest of this game. Just ground it out. Just ground it out. Gets it to Terry James, cuts back inside, gets a good amount of yardage. Gets deep inside Fremont territory. Yeah, ripped off 11 yards on that, Mario. Yeah. I just keep it on the ground, Mike. Why not? That's what's been working for me. Because if I throw, I got a chance of getting the interception. I'm, I'm sorry, that was a nine-yard game, so it's second and one. But see here, if you throw here, Mike, you're setting yourself up to failure, so to speak. Well, they've having success in, on the ground, so uh, you're right. Why not keep it on I the ground? I keep it on the ground. I got it in the center, gives the ball to Terry James. Not Terry James, gives Chris James. Excellent play by Hilario Vitale on that. I thought he was playing safety. If he was, he came a long way Which one and made a tackle in the backfield. No, Gennaro plays safety. I don't know what Hilario was playing, but he came penetrated and made an excellent play for a loss of one. Came up real quick. Don't get no better than this. Turn off five remaining in the fourth quarter. The Titans are on the Tigers' 39-yard line. Third down, two yards to go. 
We don't want to keep talking about key plays, but once again, this is a key play for both teams. I mean, that's just the way this whole game's been going. It's been, it's been based off of key plays. I mean, one play can make the difference in the outcome of this game. Algon in the knee center. Gives the ball to the big fullback up the gut. Summers. Frank Summers takes it up the gut. I think he may have gotten three yards on the first down on that play. Think they will advance the chains. They will, yes, first down, Mike, like you said, as the clock continues to run. Clock continues to run with 9.33 remaining in the fourth quarter. 21st Silver Bowl. Played at Laney College. Played at Laney College today. On a good face, hey, it don't get no better than this football weather, does it, Mike? Weather-wise <laughs> and team-wise. I mean, these teams are, these, these two teams are playing their hearts out. And here, with nine minutes to go, we still have a ball game on our hands. Ooh, big hit, big hit. And Brewer came up and laid helmet. Big right hit here. by W.C. Yeah. Brewer. Yeah, big hit. And number 66, Johnny Brown was on the bottom of that tackle. Yeah. But he initially just came up and just met him, you know? Because he didn't see him. Chris James didn't see him. He came up and just met him. Second and eight for Skyline. 8.52 remaining. Skyline's holding on to a 21-18 lead. Skyline has the ball on Fremont's 34-yard line. 8.45 remaining on Mario Bobbin will be assisted by Mike Taylor of the Oakland Raiders Public Relations. We haven't heard from number seven, Rufus Skillen, in a long time, Mario. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think they're going to be hearing from And it gives the Chris John. Nope. Terry Jen. He's got to get his name right. Was, that was Johnson Mario. Lario Vital. Once a uh, Vital. I'm sorry. Yeah, Vital brought him down. Vital back on the play. Lario Vital's playing an excellent game. Not on offense, but on defense too. Yeah, yeah. But you have to realize Terry James is going both ways. He's also playing defensive end for the Titans as well. These kids are impressive. Yeah, yeah. Now I talked to a lot of kids earlier, especially with the Tigers. I said, hey, you know. I said, hey, it's all about stamina. Fourth quarter, how well conditioned are you? The Tigers said they were up for the challenge today. Well, I'm sure they have some leftover turkey at home, so just leave it all in line out here. Oh, yeah. You got you plenty of it tonight. Terry Johnson up the gut, gets nowhere. Brought down six, immediately six. by big 6-6 six, six of the Tigers. Johnny Brown Johnny once Brown. again. Johnny Brown and with some help from Paul Alberta. As the cock might continues to wind down. Mario, I don't think time is really a factor right now, at least as far as Fremont is concerned. They have plenty of time to get back in this game and take the lead. They need the football. That's true, but the, you have to realize Skyline is on the third is on the Tigers 30 yard line. I don't think this is a, an opportunity. I think this is four down territory right now. I think from a from a stand, well, here we are. Here we got fourth down and uh, Skyline's gonna go for a field, field goal. goal. Placencia. Didn't I tell you, Mike, we're going to see it? 48 yard field Did goal. Did I not tell you that we kick field goals in the OAL? Placencia will go for a 48 yard attempt. Blocked. Didn't get there. I don't think it was blocked, but it didn't get there. It didn't even have a chance. Did not have a chance I see, at all. Since you guys, the Raiders, drafted a first round draft pick as a kicker, now we feel in the OAL, we got to turn it up a whole nother level. So now we're starting to kick field goals because of Janik House. Well, I'll tell you what, Pistonsi, the young man, certainly has been impressive on his PATs as well as his kickoff. Uh, his kickoff. So, unfortunately, that time he couldn't get it on. It was a high snap, first of all, and he couldn't get it up. So now, Mike? Really, he didn't have the opportunity, the ideal conditions as far as his kick was concerned. And this is it, Mike. We got 6.54 remaining in this contest, and Fremont has the ball. This is do or die drive. This is do or die drive. This is do or die, die drive. drive. I mean, this is where either Fremont's going to win or they're going to lose. It's all going to come down to this possession right here. That's I'm putting. I'm going all on the line. Here. We're Lario Vitals behind the center. Takes it to Brewer. Goes around outside. Breaks a couple of tackles, and we have a flag. Unfortunately, I think you're going to have another holder penalty there, Mario. Mm, don't bring him back. The thing about Fremont, though, they've showed the propensity to come back from penalties and what have you. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't slowed yeah. them down one bit. Unfortunately, they've had a lot of them. But you know, they came up big because they held the Titans in their territory. And now they have the ball back. They're only down by three points. And they need to score. They ain't going for no field goal. The, the unfortunate part here is now they're going to be first and 20 from deep in their own territory. That's true, but I still think they have the athletes that can get them the first down and get them to continue moving down the field. Well, I think it's very important from that, for them now to really try to get the ball up the field. They've, yeah. been, they've been throwing short passes and been running the ball. They really got to look to air it out. True. And and they're going back to, they got a trips, they got a trips right here. 
And Delario's the quarterback. He goes back. He's going to throw the ball. Throws a screen. Trip right. Screen left. Gets the ball to Alberto. Alberto takes some good moves. Still on his feet. He is just is possessed right now. He doesn't want to go down. Well, that was an excellent design. Yeah. Excellent play on Fremont's part. An excellent yeah. execution. Yeah. To get 10 yards on that play. Yep. Alberto did a good job on receiving that screen and getting it upfield. In fact, they got the 10 yards back that they lost exactly. in that penalty, which exactly. is what you want. Yeah. On the second and 20, you want to get 20 yards. Yeah. Or That's first and 20, I'm yeah. sorry. You don't want to get 20, you want to get 10. Yeah. You want to get 12 back, get part of it back. You put yourself in somewhat of a favorable position on second down. Now you, now you only need 10 yards to get a first down on second down. 5.55 remaining. Skyline has a 21 to 18 lead. We're in the fourth quarter of the 21st Silver Bowl. Play that Laney College on a beautiful day after Turkey Day. So Fremont's come out of that wishbone. And here they're now in spread formation. Vitals using his athletic ability, gets the ball off. We have a flag. I think you're going to have a legal player downfield. Okay, so which is going to hurt the Tigers again. Yeah, big number 64. For the Tigers. Stephen Bell. Stephen Bell. It ends to cross. We're back, viewers. And I'm sorry, Mike, I've been mispronounced. It's the PR director for the Open Arms. Helping me announce today's game. Vital throws the ball. Almost caught by his receiver. Almost. I'll tell you, Mario, I don't know if that was uh, <laughs> worthy of the card or not. He would have been tackled on that play. So True. it's probably the best they didn't. Uh, he didn't catch the ball. At least the clock stops. And uh, now they got third down, though. Big third down. What would you do? Big you got to go down. deep. You, you got to get up the field. You really got to get up the field with the football, which is what Fremont really hasn't done a whole lot. They had a couple of long passes to, to Paul Alberta. I see him reporting back in the game. I think look to see Paul Alberta involved in this, this, this play right here, Mario. That's so true. I mean, he's the big play guy. But I'm surprised they haven't thrown the ball to Gennato Vital yet. I don't think Gennato has even touched the ball here since he hasn't been playing uh, quarterback. quarterback. But he's a good receiver. He's one that brought him back into the game uh, the first time they played against the Titans, as well as last uh, week's playoff game against the McClellan's. Vital's back to pass, gets in some trouble, avoids a tackle. Gets the ball, throw it away, and fourth down will now come up. Crucial situation here, viewers. Crucial situation. You, you got to punt the ball right now, Mario. I know there's 526 left, but you got two timeouts. You got to punt the ball. She got a little bit of time left. So you're getting one timeout. Yeah. You got to punt the ball. Yeah. Both teams have one timeout left. Scores 21 to 18 in favor of the Titans with 526 remaining in the fourth quarter. This is the 21st Silver Bowl being played here at Laney College on a beautiful football day. So there's no excuses, because they ain't gonna get no better than this in reference to football weather, Mike. There's no excuses, and you see the fans here are here to support the team. A great day for them to sit out here and watch a, an excellent football game by two very, very, very well-coached high school football teams. And the ball is taken, and he may go all the way. And the game is now wide open. Big play by big players. Harrison Smith made a very big play. Harrison Smith hit the seam, hit the sideline, up the sidelines for a touchdown. Well, you have to credit special teams because special teams came up big there. You really do. I mean, it's a 50-yard return, uh, and really there was nobody who even got in his way there, Mario. And he got to his wedge. He, he got to his wedge, took it up the sideline. Now, I don't know, the light's not looking too good for the Tigers with five total remaining in the fourth quarter. It's not looking good at all, but once again, they have an opportunity to utilize their special teams as they did early on to maybe return this kick and get them right back in the game. That's we'll true. See. That's true. That's so true. 27 now to 18. Five to remaining. Titans fans are now feeling it. They feel the victory. It's definitely at grass. Another silver ball will be kept up there on the hill. We'll send it back to do the point after touchdown kick. No good. Still have what a nine point lead, so even a touchdown and a two point conversion is not good enough. You're right, Mario. There's still two possessions that needed for Fremont. Mm -hmm. This is a tough, tough role for Fremont. Mm -hmm. And they have their chances. They have their chances. So now it's going to be big. And viewers, we'll be back after a quick PSA. We'll be right back. Five, four, three, two, and we're back, viewers. Five still remaining in the fourth quarter. 21st Silver Bowl. Skyline has a 27 to 18 lead. Back deep for the Tigers. That man, Paul Alberta. 
Catches at the goal line. He has a save, Mario. He cuts it up, and he is gone. All the way he made go all the way. Whoa. He's brought down at the five-yard line. He's brought down by number 33. That was a big play. Dwight Elders. Mm -hmm. Dwight Elders did a big play. He saved the touchdown. He did save a touchdown, but we'll see how long he saves the scoring opportunity. What is, what is our brother average on a few returns this game? Like 40 yards a pop? At least. Hey, Rick, mess around against us about this one game alone. I'll tell you what, Paul Alberta showed a first. He showed excellent speed, a first, and the opportunity to get the big play done. Do you remember how he had a cramp earlier? I don't big think play. he's cramping down. No. Big here, Mike. If the Tigers can score quickly, hold the Titans, they're back in it. Viewers, the game don't get no better than that. All up heard of 5'11", 180 with excellent speed. As the Tigers are now on the six yard line of the Titans, 5'12 remaining. Big play, big play by the Titans defensive line right there. That was an excellent play by number 91. Elijah, Elijah, Elijah Booker. Elijah Booker. Broke through the line of scrimmage. Where right now, I think you got to get Lario uh, Vital yep. on the flanks. You got to get yep. him up. He's been having a horrendous, uh, I should say, a horrendous time. At least his offensive linemen have been having a horrendous time trying to keep those skyline blockers off of him. Yeah. Especially penetration at the middle. I think you got to get something outside. Yeah. True. True. Chose you got to get you got to get Vital outside. Let him utilize his athletic. I agree. His athletic ability. They line up in the wishbone once again. Vital back. Go with the bootleg. Gets around the outside. Tries to fake throw. Brought down by 13 of the Titans. Big play. Stayed home. Big play by the Titans. By big 13. We have no name on them. On our roster. So we can just say big play by number 13. Well, as you said, number 13 made an excellent play. Stayed at home. We were talking about that bootleg that Rich Gannon likes to likes to run. John Gruden likes to call. That play, they, they call that bootleg, but Skyline was ready for it. They were not surprised at all. At all. They stayed at home and made the play. And you know what's a big loss. Yeah, I mean, that was big. That's what I'm saying. Skyline starts to bring in them extra people now. They start to bring in them extra people. And the clock is still running. Yeah. You would think they would have, you know, stopped it by now. Third down, 10 yards ago on the uh, Titans 17-yard line. 338 left in this ball game, Mario. Lario underneath center. Back to pass. Tries to get around. A heavy rush. Big play. Big play by number eight. Chris Lockson. Chris Lockson makes the play on that. He made the play of the day. Mario Fremont's going the wrong way. What yeah. do you think? Oh, yeah. Well, you just said it, Mike. It's so unfortunate for him. But the biggest play of today's game was that right there. The biggest play of the game was made by on that kickoff return. True. I'll tell you, number 33. True. I mean, this game today has been all about big plays. And, 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 and I mean, both teams, even the loser, you know, don't go home and, 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 and hold your head down. As I said, the biggest play on this drive was by number 33, Mr. Elders, who yeah. caught Paul Alberta at yeah. the five. Yeah. He did have an angle on him, but he did bring the ball carry down at the five-yard line. And here they are. They're going backwards now. That fourth and 33. Fremont's at fourth down at the at Skyline's 33-yard line. Going deep for Gino, Gennaro Vitale, and the ball's picked off. A little bit unthrown. The ball's picked off. 225 remaining in the 21st Silver Bowl playoff at Laney College. Harrison Smith pulled in the interception on that. It's not looking too good right now for the Tigers. With 225 remaining in the fourth quarter, 27 to 18 contest thus far. Well, I'll tell you, all Skyline has to do now is get one first down. I think you can uh, wrap this game up and give Skyline a championship. And then, yeah, and then both teams have just one timeout left, so there's not really too much you can do with your timeouts at this time. Very gallant effort by the Tigers, though. Very gallant. Remember that Fremont needs two scores to get back in this game. That's so true. Algani, for the first time, will take a run himself around the right end. So he just took it from the center, ran around the right side. You got three yards on that, Mario. Three yards. The clock continues to tick down. That's the most important thing at this point in time is the clock. Yep. Continue, to, continue to tick. Let it Stay in bounds. Don't throw the ball and let the clock run. Let it work to your advantage. On Fremont's side, 
you want to get him out of bounds. You want to yeah. force him to throw the ball, yeah. and you want to stop the clock any way you can. Unfortunately, they only have one timeout, and I don't think Stalin's going to throw the ball. So on Fremont side, you got to look to try to create the turnover right now. Yeah, we have a timeout by the Tigers at this time. They're going to use the last timeout. Oh, I take that back. Two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. Because nobody seemed to have take, lost the timeout, so it seemed like it was a two-minute warning that stopped the clock. <laughs> uh, we're having fun up here. I can thank Mike Taylor from the Oakland Raiders Public Relations Department for joining us today and uh, assisting us with today's football broadcast. It's been my pleasure, Mario. It's been my pleasure to get out here, get out in the community, and to see the support, not only see the support from, from these fans out here. As yeah, you said, I mean, we got a full the, house here. Yeah, we have a full house. I mean, here at Laney College, yeah. it, it's, it's very impressive to me to see the people come out to support yeah. to support yeah. these young people yeah. here in the in the OAL. Yeah. Well, a lot of people from the Fremont side kind of have, have left, but people from Skyline are still here. But uh, it was an exciting game, you know? Very exciting game. It could have went either way. Uh, the better team won, basically. Let's not write off just yet. Let's not write off just yet. The stranger things have happened. True. Fremont gets a turnover right here, runs it in, gets an onside kick, gets the ball back. Who knows what may happen here? So let's not write them off just yet. Well, whoever wins, you know, the best team won. Point well made. You know, that's what they always say. The better team will always wins. And uh, not to say anything negative about the team that comes up with a losing end of the stick, because both these teams did outstanding job today. You're absolutely right. Both teams do it. They do outstanding jobs. And both coaches did outstanding jobs with their with their teams as well. Yeah, because I'm going to tell you, Mike. Their teams prepared. Let me tell you, man. If I would have, you know, had to pay my fee to come to this game, I got my money's worth, man. Well, we definitely all got our money's worth. Like, I'm donating my salary here back to the uh, to the both teams here. And we're going to remember that. Our granny gives the ball to Chris James with the gut. My salary for doing this game. <laughs> I got you. I got you. It's in our fund, KDOL fund. Thank you very much for your contribution. As the clock continues to run down, 136, 135. You got third and three for Skyline. What do you do? Uh, I just go. Fremont's 25 yard line. You run the ball. You're running up the gut. Yep. Give it to number 28. Mm -hmm. He's been effective for you all game in yep. terms of running up the gut. And you do it. Give it to Terry Johnson, and you see what happens. True. Terry Johnson is lined up as your tailback. As the clock continues to wind down, fourth quarter, 27 to 18, Titans on lead. They get the ball to the big power back. Gets around the outside, first down by Jerry Johnson. Mario, I'm sorry, Terry Johnson. Terry Johnson, as we call it. I think, Mario, that's all she wrote. Yeah. Now run the clock. Yeah. Take your kneel downs, run the clock. And I, I, I stand to be it. corrected. Uh, Fremont has no more timeouts left, so I think the clock's going to continue to wind down. Oh, they just took their last timeout. No, the clock continues clock to run. Starts, run the clock, take your kneel downs, and, uh, and go home with the championship. Yeah, well, that's so true. Well, viewers, I know you... Uh, it was a good football game. You know, both teams need to hold their head up high. Now Skyline has won the Super Bowl 14 out of 21 times. Beam still the head on, head up there on the hill. Must continue success, Coach Beam, but Coach Matthews Walker, hey, you'll be back next year. The ball is fumble, big play. The Tigers almost made a big play, Mike. That could have been big. very, very crucial. Very crucial. A very crucial play. And, you know, I don't understand why they're not just leaning on the ball right yeah, now. Yeah, that, that wasn't too smart of a play by Coach Bean, but uh, I just would have just took one knee. Let me get up out of here because these guys are playing big ball. Anything's liable to happen. This clock continues to tip down. They don't have to worry about the play now. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The 24 Silver Bowl is now coming to a conclusion with the Titans coming up with the victory. 27 to 18. That's another conclusion of the Silver Bowl. Well, Mike, I'd like to say once again, man, you know, thanks for joining us with this broadcast. We really, you, you know, great, your, your, your help was greatly appreciated, oh, Mike. It's, it's been my pleasure. It's been my pleasure being here. The excitement here, the enthusiasm. It's something that has been contagious to me, has even reached up here in the broadcast booth. Good. It's something here to see the support from the from the fans, from the community, from the superintendent from the Oakland uh, Oakland Public School District. Uh, it's, it's been really, really impressive to me. And myself, coming from a, a city school here in Dallas, Southern California, I can see a lot of similarities 
between what these kids are dealing with and what I've dealt with. So and to see these kids come out and play and perform and perform really in a very competitive game, I'm really impressed. Well, Mike, thanks a lot once again for coming down and supporting us, supporting the OAO Championship or the Silver Bowl, I should say. And I'd like to say you viewers out there, thanks for tuning in and watching another special KDL TV 13 sports presentation. For myself, Mario Bobbin will be joined alongside today's broadcast with Mike Taylor of the Raiders. So long, everybody.